All righty. Welcome here to another wonderful season here at Egan for Egan TV. I am Casey Lux, joined by Skip Newton. We have the season opener delayed by one day. This game against Eastview, the crosstown rival, was supposed to happen yesterday, but we are all set to go after a little difficulties all over the place, right? They had me go up there and do the PA. You got to hear me uh, practice my announcing for the season. But Skip, how you doing? Welcome abroad. Uh, happy to have you. Yeah, it's great to be here, Casey. Thanks a lot. Really excited to get this season started and excited to see some good baseball today. Absolutely, absolutely. We have, uh, you know, I think before when I looked, it was 60 degrees and about 12 to 14 mile an hour southwest winds, so meaning blowing out to right field. And I think by the time I got to the park, it was already up to about 20, 25, right? So we could see some tricky action in the outfield today and even uh, short balls going in the infield. The outfielders need to come in and help out. And we're all set to go. We have uh, the sophomore, Will Mitchell, is on the mound for Egan. He's going to be facing off the shortstop, who's leading off for Eastview. Lewis Rogers, fastball in the outside corner, good to go for a strike. Just to let you know, we're just uh, getting set up with the camera work. So we have just this one camera angle right now. But uh, we'll get set up here. You'll have your kind of multiple angles here as the game goes on. Fastball misses up. So Skip and I did a game, I think, what was it, 2021, 2019, was it? Yeah, it's been a few years. Yeah. T too long for a, for an old guy like me to right. remember. It's, that's basically what's going on. Right. Actually, I think it was Griffin Fenske's sophomore year, so I believe that would have been uh, – and he graduated last year, so I think it was 2021. And like I was, we were talking before, I think they were doing some maintenance work on the field, uh, so then Egan had to play most of their home games at a off-site. Uh, but we had a good view down there, too. We were right on the field, basically. All right, got a ground ball. It's going to go foul over to Lockemeyer at first. So to give you your defensive lineup for the Egan Wildcats, the home Egan Wildcats, we're gonna have Joe Anderson out in left field, take Gage in center, Eddie Moore is out in right field today. Theo King at uh, third base, Ryan Eckerley at shortstop, Matt Cunningham at second, Danny Lockemeyer at first, and then Brandon Lundenborg, the sophomore, with plenty of experience as he caught every game last year as a freshman. Off speed down, and he's got a quick 2-2 count here early on. What are you seeing early on here from the uh, battle between Mitchell and Rogers? I like that last pitch, wasting one low. He was ahead one and two in the count. Might as well see if he can get the, the batter to, to take a swing at something bad, right? Absolutely. There's another off speed. This one's going to drop in there for a hit out to left field. Anderson's going to come up on it. Rogers is taking his time to get over to first, so leadoff hit. And that's uh, Coach Stry, Pat Stry, the third base coach, doing the third base coaching and the head coach. That's their uh, dream, right? Start off the season with a base hit to start the season off. Yeah, it doesn't get a whole lot better than that. <laughs> I, he did a nice job of working the other way on that pitch. Good piece of hitting. Yeah, I mean, he battled the count, right? I mean, he saw some pitches, and that's what you want to do as a leadoff hitter. I, I always think, you know, it's always interesting to me, um, you know, how it goes, philosophy, right, for, uh, for leadoff hitters. You know, some coaches, ooh, fastball in, that's going to brush back. The first, the pitcher and DH, Cooper DeSutter. Um, I always think it's an interesting philosophy. And I, I kind of want to understand what yours is here in a second, um, as far as as far as leadoff hit, pit, hitters go. You know, do you want a guy that takes a lot of pitches and you know lets the guys see some pitches, or do you like the guy that's aggressive and isn't afraid to jump on that first fastball? You know, you can make an argument for both ways. I, I think if, if I'm a player, I, I want the first the first batter to, to to take as many pitches as they can. I want to see what the pitcher has, right. get a good idea of that, you know, watching. So I, I have a better approach when I come up after those first couple of guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the Sutter is going to be doing the pitching today, so facing his counterpart. Rogers getting a decent lead at first. I always think it's interesting to uh, skip, you know, the, the beginning of the season. There's just a lot of things that, yeah, you've been practicing, you know, in the gym. Yeah, you've been practicing them, you know, out in the field, but it's not live action, right? So, you know, watching guys get their first lead, seeing when, you know, who's going to steal, right? Seeing what kind of jumps they get. Uh, those are all things that, you know, are foreign at the beginning of the season and they come second nature by about game three, right? Yeah, absolutely. You never know what's going to happen when you get outside. Like you mentioned earlier, you know, the, the conditions are not really reliable here in the state of Minnesota. Yeah, right. Hot shot down the line is going to be foul. So Mitchell doing a nice job, was down 3-0, came back with a get-me-over fastball on 3-0, and then now he uh, has to Sutter, his counterpart, at 3-2. Brings Lundenborg out as I think maybe whether there was some confusion on the signs or not, I think they just want to make sure they're on the same page. Rogers at first let off with the, he's a left-handed hitter, let off with a little flip shot over the third baseman King's head. 
We're sitting at about, I don't know, high 50s to 60 degrees. But we do have a, a breeze that's picking up at times. Now it's kind of cooled down. And we'll see if the sun peaks out behind us as well. We're working on the camera action here, so you kind of have the one angle so far. But we'll get we'll keep you caught up, and I'll just keep talking, and, and we'll, we'll bring you home with all the action. There's another fly ball. It's going to be fouled down the line over towards the uh, shot put area, I believe that would be, Skip. Not far enough. There's a track and field event, I think, today, too. Yeah, there's always something going on. Yeah. And not surprised there to see Rodgers trying to trying to move on that pitch with a full count. Yep, absolutely. Nope, good eye. So 3-2 is the count. Mitchell's on the mound. Rodgers is at first. Ball in the dirt for a walk. So not the start that Mitchell wanted, although he uh, did come back on a 3-0 count. That's going to bring up the, the catcher, Nick Brandt. And as I was mentioning to Skip before the game, uh, a lot of these Eastview names look familiar to me, especially to Sutter, Brandt, Novak, Riedel, even Kronberg. So kind of that heart of the lineup, I feel like, are guys that uh, definitely were starters and were playmakers last year. And uh, Brandt's not afraid to kind of hug up towards the plate here. He's got his toes on the, toes almost on the uh, white batter's box line, shows bunt, strong curveball in there for a strike. It's a good opening day challenge here for Egan. You know, Eastview, like you said, returning a lot of players from last year, and they, they had a successful season. It's 17-9 overall, 11-7 in the South Suburban, you know, yeah. finishing third place. A, a really good year for Eastview last year. No, absolutely. No, good good comment. And I know you know you, you keep your eye on Egan just with your other uh, broadcast duties. So whether it's necessarily the kids that you know, you at least have an idea of how their programs are doing, right? Another curveball in there for a strike. So Mitchell switching it up here on the number three hitter, kind of went to slider curve. Uh, first two pitches, so it'll be interesting to see if he work what he works on here. If it's a fastball low, if he tries to get him a chase up high, where are you going? O two here, Skip. Try to go low and away. Yeah, there you go. So fastball outside corner just misses. So one two's our count. Top of the first, Rogers reached on a single to Sutter, who's going to be doing the pitching today. He's the Otani, the Otani for Eastview as he's DHing for himself, meaning that if he comes out of the game, he'll keep batting as the game continues. He reached on a walk and it's a one two count as the sun wants to poke out. As far as Egan's defense go, Lockemeyer did have some experience playing first. He played some first last year. He's also a stud left-handed pitcher for them. So the inexperience that they might have at the plate, ball gets past Lunenborg and that's gonna send Rogers to third and to Sutter to second. But like we were talking before, you know, maybe some inexperience at some positions, outfield, um, in the corners at, at times. Um, they do have some experience back with Cunningham and Eckerly up the middle. Uh, but the pitching, obviously, is a key thing that they do. They do have three starters coming back that, that saw plenty of innings last year. Yeah, you mentioned before the game they, they lost 10 seniors from last year's right. squad. So it'll be really interesting to see how they can, you know, get going here early this season. Absolutely. That one's fall back. I look like a little bit of a high slider. So 2-2 two -two count, nobody out. Eastview threatening here early. Runners on second and third. Mitchell on the mound, he's a sophomore. And we'll get to his stats here in a second because the wind's actually slowed down so I can actually get some papers out without clutter. The 2-2 two -two pitch, foul back towards us. As far as Mitchell goes, I'll tell you here in a second. So when's the last time you did a baseball game there, Skip? The last time I broadcasted a game was yeah. with you, Casey. Oh, wow. Like something to So we're really dusting you off today. Yeah, I really want to get back into it, so I was glad Good. for this opportunity. I awesome. I want to thank the Easton Bo East Egan Booster Club for, for reaching out. I really appreciate that. Yeah, well, no, happy to have you. You know, you and I are probably a little similar in the fact that, uh, you know, we can do, we we can and we have done broadcasting, play-by-play, -by, -play by ourselves. Uh, but it is good to always get another voice, right, and get another opinion. Fastball's up, 3-2 count. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it, it can make for, uh, I don't know, I, I feel like it's not necessarily a long day, though, because if you're doing it by yourself, you're just constantly in the action, right? Good patience at the plate there by Brandt, laying off that high one on a 2-2 pitch, worked the count full. All right, 3-2 pitch, another fastball's up high. So second walk of the inning. And now we have bases loaded. And we'll see if that might even call a mound visit from pitching coach Luke Degermont. 
You know, that's always a tough thing too, right? Now we're gonna see a pinch runner. It's gonna be uh, Luke Macaron is gonna come in and run for the catcher, Nick Brandt. But you know, it's a, baseball's such a funny game, as you know as well. Um, you know, it's one of those things, had a, had a good, you know, good at bat by Rogers at the plate. Fouled off some pitches, right? And uh, you know, he flips one out to left field, and before you know it, now you have bases loaded. Whereas, you know, he gets under just a little bit, it's caught at third by King, and they could be out of the inning by now. Pop up, this one should stay in. Lockemeyer's got room, got plenty of room. And one pitch, one out, as uh, Mitchell retires Charlie Novak, the first baseman, and a huge out. That's gonna bring up now the third baseman, Charlie. Redell. So they go Charlie Charlie back to back, Chuck and Chuck. That's right. Chuck <laughs> maybe Chuck E. Cheese if they're you know back in their real youth baseball Absolutely. baseball days. Now tell me, and I, I've heard the rule, but just you know, for may maybe somebody watching, you said yeah. they're pinch runner for the catcher at yep. first. That's something that high school allows Correct. so that the catcher can get their stuff on and, and yeah. keep the game flowing a little yep, faster. Absolutely. And and it, and uh, you know, I think unfortunately our first pitch fastball is up, still have bases loaded, Rogers at third, to Sutter at second, and then all the pitch runner macaroon. You know, I think back in the day, some people thought, oh, like, that's a strategic move because we didn't have the, you know, in shape, strong, fast moving catchers. You know, you had not necessarily big and overweight. I'm not going to say that. Hot shot hit out to left. That's going to be to Joe Anderson. He makes the catch. Good relay into third to keep to Sutter at second. RBI out. RBI line out, though, for Riedel, and Eastview takes the lead. But I think getting back to what we we're talking about, uh, I think that you know now what you're noticing too is there is a lot of you know athletic catchers, right? I mean the days of having a you know big, tall, wide catcher, right, to block, you can still get the job done with a you know five ten guy, right? That's quick. But yeah, it's it's mainly just for the mere fact that then that way they can rest their legs, you know, because they're catching the whole game, and they can also get in the dugout and put on their gear, and that way you keep the game moving, right? But what you also will notice is there are a fair amount of teams that. Their catcher might be their third fastest guy, so they're going to leave him in the game, right? Now, they might take him out maybe with two outs at first, but if he's at second or third, they might want to keep him in, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a great thing to keep the game moving, but like you said. Oh, nice play by Mitchell. And a little squibber back to him. So, with that being said, Eastview does get one run on one hit, no errors, but two left on base. Hey, with that being half said, though, uh, an excellent job by Will Mitchell of only allowing that one run with bases loaded. And yeah. we're going to stay here through the break, so that way we can kind of talk through Egan's lineup and kind of recap that last inning. But, you know, like I said, I, you know, I think, um, you know, you had base load, nobody out, and you found a way to get out of there with the first pitch pop-up, and then uh, a hot shot to left, which is a nice nice play by Anderson. Um, I mean, if that ball moves in the gap, it could be bases clearing. Exactly. That could have been a huge inning. And, and like you mentioned, that first pitch pop-up, interesting that he chose to swing at the first yeah. pitch after two consecutive base on balls that yeah. that's a huge out for Egan yeah but you know you also have to remember too right it, I mean that's that's the aggressiveness approach that you know some coaches will say well okay he's throwing you know let's just say he's throwing eight balls out of 15 right and he walked two guys well more than likely he's going to come back with a fastball right so it just depends on now they had their number five hitter up so you have to trust that he's got back control but it's the first game of the year so uh you know it's always hard to know so with that being said, we got Cooper DeSutter on the mound, and I believe he's a senior. If not, he's a junior. I've seen him pitch at least <laughs> at least once or twice in the last two years, so I can't necessarily give you the breakdown and the scouting report for him, but I know he's a strong lefty, and I saw him pitch a few times, I know, like I said, last year as well. Uh, for Egan, though, we're gonna go this way for their lineup. You're gonna have the left fielder who made that nice catch out in left field, Joe Anderson, uh, he's going to be batting leadoff. You're going to have a shortstop, Ryan Eckley, will be batting second. He'll be fouled by Brandon Lundenborg, the catcher. The DH today is Brady, excuse me, Brody Illa, who was primarily a pitcher last year. He's going to do some hitting this year and pitching. You got Tate Gage, who's going to be out in center. Followed by the Joe first baseman, Danny Lockemeyer. Second baseman, Matt Cunningham. Third baseman will be Le Theo King. And then the number nine, it'll be the right fielder, Eddie Moore. So. Joe Anderson comes up. I can get some stats on him from last year here in a second. Joe last year was uh, primarily used as a pinch hitter, sometimes DH, as well as uh, outfield. 
and was a strong pinch runner as well. I think he had five stolen bases on the season, and if my memory serves me, I believe he was five for five, so I think he was 100% stealing bases. So if we get Joe on, we might see some action right away to start. Wind still blowing uh, strongly out to right. Big swing by Joe on the uh, fastball by DeSutter. Now you'll notice one thing, it's a very odd thing today, is that they couldn't find the old glory American flag. I, it wasn't in the spot that it was supposed to be. They always put it up about 3.30, and uh, they just couldn't find it. So I don't know if that meant it was being used at a different park or it just wasn't put where it was supposed to be. Everybody adjusted well during the National Anthem. They Absolutely. all looked at the pole. They listened so they, to me. They, yeah, they knew where they were supposed yeah, to look. They listened to me. Check swing by Anderson. Two ones are count. So as I mentioned, uh, Anderson last year, 399 on base percentage. So a solid number of getting on base. Five stone bases, a uh, few walks. Scored three runs on the season in limited duty. So they're expecting uh, good things from Joe this season. And he works to Sutter into a 3-1 count after uh, swinging at that first pitch. So here's the delivery from the big lefty. Fastball on the outside corner, ball one. Ball four, excuse me. So Anderson gets on first. And we'll see if he gets in motion here from Coach Butler. Coach Butler, just so you know, Skip, since it's been a while, typically an aggressive, uh, aggressive coach. Not afraid to steal, not afraid to put guys in motion, make the defense adjust, open up some holes for your hitters. And I think with this younger team, you might see some more bunting this season too. Rip shot by Eckerly is gonna be a hit. Anderson's gonna stay at second. Eckerly sees one pitch, rips it over the head of the second baseman Schmitz. And just like that, now Egan wants to get on this party here early on in the first. So both both Egan batters taking a, a swing at that first pitch. So I don't know if that was the the game plan going in yeah. to be aggressive. Maybe they know he he likes to you know keep right. things around the plate. He's a you know, first pitch you know fastball yeah. type type pitcher. First, you know an early strike thrower, right? Consistently around the zone, right? Or it's Absolutely. the first or it's the first game of the season. Yeah. They're just eager to well, finally hit I, live pitching. And I think the other thing too you have to remember is uh, you know I mean. These guys know each other real well, plus they probably know each other from summer ball all these years. So, I mean, there's there's scouting going into this. Even though it's the first game, there's probably some tendencies that they can pull from last year or from summer ball and from previous years, right? As I mentioned, I mean, DeSutter, I feel like, has pitched against Egan multiple times in the last couple years. Fastball at the knees for a strike to the catcher, Brandon Lunenborg. He is a sophomore, and he had a heck of a season last year. We'll get into that as the game goes on all over the top three in many hitting statistical categories and a guy that's not afraid to uh, show off some power in with a big fly. Ball in the dirt, nice scoop and block by the catcher, Nick Brand, who's done an excellent job behind the plate for Eastview for multiple years as well. So Joe Anderson's at second, reached on a walk. Ryan Eckerly, the shortstop, first pitch swinging single to right, is sitting at first. Nobody out, there's a pickoff play. Anderson gets back. You know, the one thing I will say that's kind of cool when you do these broadcasts is that, you know, they have the microphones by each of the dugouts, right? So you do kind of get, you know, at least for us and for the fans at home, it sounds probably louder than what it does to the fans, but you do kind of hear what the, you know, the dugout's saying, you can hear everybody yelling back, you, you know, you hear the chatter and talking. As long as they keep it clean on both sides, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's <laughs> not, that's what I was thinking. You, you run a little risk with live television and the no dump button, but hey, it's it's part of the game and it's part of the atmosphere, and I think well, it really helps bring it home for the the fans watching. Absolutely. So one two count here to the uh, number three hitter, Lunenborg. Fastball fouled off. But you know, I think the other thing you have to remember where high school is, is probably a lot different than um, you know college and pros, obviously and even town ball for that matter. Well, town ball is probably similar because, so I still play town ball down in, down in by New Ulm at Searles, and we, we pretty much play the high school rules. And it's it's getting to the point where it's pretty much no swearing. I mean, you get a warning, you might get thrown out. So I think, you know, the high school kids know it too as well. There's a shot out to center, and that's gonna be hit to Kronberg. Nice catch as he tracks it down. Anderson is gonna tag up into third. Lundenborg does his job. Nice piece of hitting by Lundenborg. 
one two count, fouled a couple off, does the job and moves the runner over to bring up Illa, the DH. He's gonna get a little insight from Lunenburg too. Alrighty, so as we mentioned, Brody Illa last year, the second most innings pitched as a freshman for the Wildcats. This year being counted upon a little bit more at the plate as well as uh, he'll still be, you know, obviously counted upon his pitching, doing the DHing today. Bats from the left side. We have Anderson at third, we have Eckerly at first. And we'll see if they put Eckerly in motion here first and third. Fastball in the outside corner is a ball. I know the viewers can't see the, the base runners, but one thing that, that's interesting to watch is the, the new leadoff technique that, that yep. they're using. They're using what's called vaulting, okay. where the, the runners are, are literally taking short little hops you know, towards the, the base that they're running to. It, and it's supposed to be an easier way to, to, get, to, motion. to get that motion going. Correct. Ball hit down the third base line. It's going to be a contact play. Scooped up, back throw to first by Riedel. That's going to send Ant Eckerly over to third. So a whole lot happened there. It's going to be an error on the play. It'll still end up being an earned run, though, towards the Sutter. So just to kind of recap there, you know, Coach Butler had the contact play on. You always hear that in Major League Baseball. And a lot of times the viewers are saying, well, why, why the heck did, why did that guy go from third? He's not even that fast. The ball was hit right at the third base. And well, the, the contact play is put on because once you see the ball being hit, you're gonna go no matter what, right? You're gonna make him field it cleanly and make him make a good throw and make the catcher make the take, right? First pitch, base hit. Out to left and that's gonna be Tate Gage with an RBI. So Gage brings in Eckerly on a base hit out to left. So as you notice now, the, the two hits here, uh, Skip, have all been on first pitches. Yeah, he tagged that one nicely. And it was really interesting going back to the, the run before, the one yeah. that scored on the air. You know, you talked about the contact play. The thing I thought is that he got a little bit of a late jump. Right. I was actually surprised that he didn't go home with that. I right. thought they had a play at home, but they chose to go to first well, instead. And I, and I think, and I think too, what you're saying, you know, what you, what you saw there is that Riedel was was you know, out of the corner of his eye could see that you know Anderson was heading home, right? So that probably you know, and then he probably took his eye off the ball a little bit, and he didn't feel the cleanly strike on the outside corner for DeSutter, and we have uh, at the plate Danny Lockenmeyer, the first baseman. You know, so I think, you know, that kind of rushed him, right? Um, the, the tricky part is if he fields it cleanly and Anderson tries to go back to third, he might just get tagged at third anyways. He was kind of in no man's land, right? Yeah, that's that's a great point. It was right down the line. All right, ball's hit up high. It's going to be to, to uh, Isaiah Jones and right. We're going to see if we get a tag, and Illa's going to stay at second. So DeSutter coaxes a pop fly from Lockenmeyer, and that's going to bring up the second baseman, Matt Cuttingham. Uh, we have Brady, Brody Illa. I got I to get better at saying Brody, not Brady, but Brody Illa is at second. And we have Tate Gage at first. Wildcats are up early two to one. On a air by Riedel. I'm not gonna say it was a two play air. I mean, I think they, they wouldn't count an air on the bobble, but he did have the bad throw to first. Low strike called in there. 0-1 count to Cunningham. And then Tate Gage came up, first pitch swinging with a base hit out to left that brought in Eckerly. Now that throw in there though did get Eckerly to third and that's what brought him in on that Gage base hit. Curveball in there for a strike. That's what I remember about the Sutter is once this curveball gets going, it, it's pretty nasty. I wouldn't say it's a 12-6er, but it's like a, almost a 1-6, you know, 1-7 if you're looking at the clock. You know, it almost kind of drops kind of straight off the table as far as kind of loops in. That might be why we're seeing a lot of first pitch swinging. Right. They, they want to get out ahead of that. Yep, exactly. If I'm going to get a fastball right away, I'm yep, swinging 100%. at it. 100%. And I think what you're going to notice, too, from, from DeSutter, with Brantby on the plate, even the you know the pitching coaches, Adam Stockwell, I think what you're going to notice, too, is they're going to start switching that up, right? They might come change up or curveball for the first pitch. They might even save fastballs for more of the out pitch, right? You know, especially if, if he's pitching to a righty and try to see if he can paint that outside corner with a fastball. 0-2 count to Cunningham. And there it is. So just what we are talking about, fastball in the outside corner. But all in all, a successful inning for Egan. They get two runs on two hits. There was that one air at third on the throwing air and two left on. So after one, it is two to one. We're gonna throw it back to the truck for 90 seconds. And we'll be back here at Egan for the top of the second inning.
don't think it looks right. This is good, and it's all is good, it, baby. Is it really all good? If you love me enough to routinely test your handyman skills, not to mention the strength of your marriage, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. I'm going to call my dad. If you're buzzed and doing this... Donating pet food can keep families together. Pets and people belong together. Learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org. How do you know when you've made the right decision? It's the feeling you get in your gut. The one that tells you what's right or wrong. It's the voice inside you that says, I'm buzzed. Better leave the car when it's time to go. Buzz driving is drunk driving. All righty, back here at the top of the second inning. Eastview is coming to the plate, and we have number 10, and that's going to be Ben Schmitz, the second baseman. Almost made a, gr a great jumping play uh, in that first inning on that base hit by Eckerly, but I think that thing sailed over him by about a, maybe a foot or so. It looked like he timed it out, though, right? First pitch fastball by Mitchell, the sophomore. And let's get to Mitchell here real quick since we got some time. So Will Mitchell last year as a freshman, now I'll pass on to Skip, I was kind of giving him the rundown. Pitched in five games, had three starts. So I think that put him around third on the team maybe in starts for the year. Fastball in the outside corner for ball. 14.1 uh, innings pitch. He was 1-0 and on the season. Only had five earned runs, so I mean, not horrible, right? Five earned runs in 14 innings. And then he did average a K per inning. Ground ball to King. King to Lockemeyer for the first out of the inning. Nice job by King to come in on that slow roller. Strong throw, great stretch by Lockemeyer. And then that's now gonna bring up the right fielder, Isaiah Jones, number 21. A 2.442 ERA, so I think all in all, I mean, that's pretty solid, you know, season for a freshman, you know, pitching in a very tough South Suburban Conference. And what a nice advantage to have to to have a freshman come back with all that experience. I mean, he he gets rid of the the freshman jitters. I mean, yes. you know, he's already a, a newbie in the school at high school, right? Absolutely. Hot shot backhand. Nice play by Eckerly to Lockenmeyer. So Egan after that first inning, they dusted off those cobwebs. And we're starting to see some smooth operator in the infield right now, Skip. Yeah, that was a nice backhanded pick there by Eckerly. Really, really well done. Got the glove low because that thing did not did not hop up. So no. he had to get down four and came up firing. You know, and that's maybe one of the benefits that you might get early in the season, right? You know, the, the ground is 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 soft enough to play on, but it's still hard. So you're gonna get probably more of those true hops, right? And not so many, hopefully not so many bad hops, right? So 1-0 as a fastball misses. There's a heater up high for a strike. This is the number nine hitter. It's Kevin Wohler. He's the left fielder for Eastview. The other thing, too, I was going to point out was that ball was hit so hard that, you know, some people say, oh, you come in and charge it. But, you know, he didn't really have time to try to get around to it. Curveball in there for a strike. So he just let it come right to his backhand, and then that way he was already set up to throw, right? Yeah, when a ball is hit hard like that, you don't have to charge it. Right. Well, it gives you more time because it's going to get to you a lot faster. One, two, pitch. Check swing. Check at first. Strike three. So Mitchell cruises through that second inning with no runs and no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. We'll be back in 60 seconds this time for the bottom of the second inning here at Egan versus Eastview.
Okay, we're back here, and we hear no diggity being played. So Black Street, baby. That takes me back to, I think, sophomore year of high school, Skip. Sophomore, junior year for me. Yeah, Egan baseball so far is A plus on the on the musical selections between innings. It's it's really kicking it off with a nice start here. Absolutely, Theo the King, as they, as I think they call him, the third baseman steps in against the Sutter. Start off the second inning heater up high, ball one. The Sutter went the first inning with uh, two gave up two hits, one walk, and two earned runs as he faced seven hitters. Yeah, King was a player that got a little bit of experience last year, came up towards the end of the year, did some pinch hitting. Yeah. So looking to, looking to start the year strong. Absolutely, 3-0 count. And you know, it's always hard to know too, like, you know, first game of the season, does that mean that the Sutter's their ace? Does that mean that Will Mitchell's the ace for Egan? You know. It might be a matchup thing. There's a strike in the outside corner. But at the same time, I mean, it's the first game of the season. It's the first time guys are actually on, you know, on the mound, uh, not, you know, in practice, and it's live. So it's always hard to, you know, overly gauge somebody in their first, uh, you know, first appearance of the season. Popped up down the line, given a chase by Novak, but that's going to be foul. As I mentioned to you before, too, King last year kind of played, uh, you know, came up towards the end of the year, did some pinch hitting played some first base, so I, it is interesting that they have him over at third. He's a corner guy, so I mean, he could probably cover both. Um, and it's shown that he can play third base already with the one or two balls already hit his way, so. Full count to King, pitch from DeSutter, curveball low, and King's gonna draw the second walk of the game for Egan. Looked like he swung at, at ball four on the previous pitch, right. fouled it off, did a nice job holding off on that one to get that base on balls. Absolutely. So, right fielder, the number nine hitter, is going to be Eddie Moore. Eddie Moore trying to uh, stay on that right field spot here, as, as this is probably his first, if I remember correctly, his first. Ball in the dirt. Great jump by King. And uh, the fake bunt for a ball works and still gets the job done as King moves over to second. If I remember correctly, Moore might have got brought up for maybe a pinch hit or two last year, but kind of his first full duty varsity experience. So now you have King at second, 1-0 count to Sutter, lefty-lefty matchup. You see if Moore squares the bunt and try to get King over to third, and he does. Fastball in there for a strike. So looks like Egan switching it up too. They got uh, Coach Zach Walls is over at third. Used to be always coach, uh, head coach Steve Butler, but maybe he's doing a little bit more from the dugout. And then you got old, reliable, and steady Steve Cullors, the former minor leaguer, who's been with Egan for quite a long time, ever since Butler has been here. Gets the bunt down, that's gonna be a fair ball. High throw to the left. That's gonna bring in King as, as Riedel and him both run into each other. Hot shot relay by Riedel to Schmitz at second. It's gonna get more out, but it's still gonna bring in a run. So a lot happening there. A yeah, we, a lot of throws being made. Right, the, the throwing error, getting the run home, but a nice job by Eastview recovering and able to, to get the runner more out at second base. Exactly. And I mean, that bunt was, uh, I don't know, a foot off of home plate. I mean, it was just sitting on the batter's box uh, line there for, you know, so the catcher did a smart move. Uh, and as I mentioned, I mean, Brant's been, uh, has been back behind the plate for multiple years. And he did a nice move, I mean, he picked it up. I mean, obviously he could easily went to first, tried to get the runner at third, but that ball sailed on him over Riedel's head. Check swing by Anderson, it's gonna be quickly 0-2 to the leadoff hitter, left fielder, Joe Anderson. The one thing I thought was interesting, you know, I was kind of waiting to see what happened is they're gonna call any type of interference because you know, on the slide, they kind of both kind of ran into each other. I think Riedel tried to get up and they kind of locked legs and knocked each other over. Strike three as the Sutter gets his first K of the day on Anderson. That's gonna bring up the shortstop, Ryan Eckerly. I don't know if there was enough there for interference. You know, usually that's more of like in the base pass. I think it was incidental. They kind of both ran into each other. But a nice relay um, from Wohler to Riedel to Schmitz to obviously get Eddie Moore going to second. 
slight correction here. I think we have a we had a K in the first inning, uh, looking to end ah, the first inning. Go. So it is it is the second, second K, K there. Hey, that's good. I need that. I need that. Keep me on my toes over here. Eckerly batting a thousand on the season as he <laughs> let off the season. <laughs> <laughs> the first Egan hit on the first pitch, swinging base hit to right. The Sutter's gonna shake off that pitch from Brant behind the plate. That's what reminded me last year of Brant was just he's just a tall catcher. I mean, just you don't see you know you don't see a whole lot of height behind the plate too often. You know, it's, it's typically kind of that five nine to six foot range, and uh, you know the Joe Mowers and the Matt Weeders are, are a dime a dozen. They just, you just don't see it very often. But he's a tall catcher. He can squat squat down, and then he can also get that high fastball pretty easily as well. Because he's a dwarf in our home plate up today. <laughs> yeah, he is definitely a big guy. See, I and told you. He, he puts his his left knee all the way down on the ground, yeah. which probably is going to save him some yeah, some pain and, and suffering right. later in life. What is that, the Pudge Rodriguez? Junior Ortiz, if you're a Twins fan, he used to do that one leg down and then the one leg cockeyed way out. One, two count, two down. Lefty, lefty matchup. Third strikeout of the day for DeSutter, but Egan does attack with one run on uh, no hits, but the one air and nobody left on. So after two, Egan Wildcats three, and the Eastview Lightning one. We'll stick, we'll stay here for the in between innings. I uh, want to make sure that we give our thank yous out throughout today's game to Egan TV. So they they were so. Excellent, they were set up to do the game yesterday. The field was a little, a little too wet and they knew that today was gonna be a, a better day for baseball. I mean, if we didn't have any wind, this would be a beautiful day for baseball. So we wanna thank everybody from Egan TV for the continuous coverage of Egan and Eastview Athletics. Uh, but we have to thank Josh, who's our producer and director in the truck. Kevin is in the truck with the replays. Savina is doing our graphics today in the truck. And then on the cameras, we have Max and Sarah and I, May have heard a little birdie say that this is their first baseball game, and I think they're doing an excellent job today on the camera work. Oh yeah, absolutely. They're they're nailing it. Everything looks great, feels great, even despite the wind, which is a little bit cool, but at least it's at our backs. And yeah. like you said, it's it's still a nice day for baseball. It's March Madness is officially over, yes. so it's time. Absolutely. And you know what? I'll take this any day because uh, I've sat out here, done games on Egan. Uh, ETV and they and the camera people, not these two because they, this is their first ones, but previous camera workers as well as the people in the truck, they can attest to that we've had some that were like, you know, game starts at like 35, game ends at about 28 degrees. You know, this, you're, you're fighting off to see if you can get it within, you know, keep the sun out. It's windy, it's cold, it's rainy. I mean, if you feel like you're at more of a, a playoff football game than a high school baseball game, right? I, I remember back when my kids were young enough to participate in, you know, the Egan Athletic Association track, and, and parents had a common saying that the the coldest sport was was EAA track. It, right. Man, we suffered some frigid Friday nights or Saturday mornings. First pitch swinging is going to be, let's see here. Oh, back to the leadoff. So we got the shortstop, Lewis Rogers. So Lewis Rogers had let off the game with a base hit, came around and scored. First run of the season for Eastview. Will Mitchell gets ahead on a 0-1 on a fastball here early. Excuse me, a curveball early. Those joining late, Mitchell let the first three runners he faced get on base. He's since retired six in a row. Yeah, see, there you go. Absolutely. Fastball at the knees just misses. A couple groans from the uh, Egan faithful because I think that, that was called earlier for DeSutter. 1-1 one, one count. 3-1 is our score, Egan leading Eastview. Curveball, backside curveball in the outside corner by Mitchell's there for a strike. Egan out hitting Eastview right now, 3-1. Eastview, the board only has one air. I have Eastview for two airs, two throwing airs today. Base hit out to right, knocked down by Moore. So Rogers, two for two on the early season and hoping to start another rally like he did in the first inning. Bring up the pitcher, D.H. Cooper DeSutter, who reached on a walk, if I remember correctly, right, Skip? Yes, that is correct. Base on balls on a full count. Okay. I haven't seen a throw over yet. Rogers has been getting a healthy lead, so I think we might see him in motion at some point this at bat. Hot shot hit, deep. 
down the line. Anderson chases high off the green monster. Rogers chugging for third, and he's gonna get in safe. Interesting play there, if Eckerly lets that go, there might be a play at third to get Rogers, because Rogers was basically running against the wind, as Bob Seeger would say. So to Sutter helps his cause with a hot shot high off the green monster in left. So he starts off the season one for one and his uh, slugging percentage is through the roof right now with a double. Yeah, he crushed that one. And like you said, high off the monster. It's my first experience here with the green monster. Of course, everyone familiar with the original one out in Boston Fenway yep. Park. It it's, makes this, this ballpark so unique for yeah. a high school stadium. I really enjoy this. Yeah. It keeps a lot in, obviously. Um, you know, at the same time, I mean, you do, it's just, it, the thing is what's kind of crazy with this field, as you can tell, is that, you know, that monster's so long that it shoots straight out, right, towards uh, the foul pole, and all of a sudden you're at 380. You know, so you can't even really try to get one in that little nook area. High slider in there for a strike, 0-2, so working hard here against the catcher, Nick Brandt. What did Nick Brandt do last at bat? He also walked, and okay. I, it was the exact same situation. There were runners on second and third okay. because the first two runners got on, and a wild pitch advanced them. Okay. So we'll see if he can get that strikeout instead of the walk this time. Grounder to second, and Cunningham can't get to it if he's holding on the runner. That's going to bring in both Rogers and DeSutter. So excellent piece of hitting there by the catcher, Brandt. Cunningham was shading up the middle. I think they were trying to pitch him you know, inside, middle in. And it looked like Cunningham was going to get to it, and that would have potentially kept saved one run and maybe even gotten an out. Dove for it, but just couldn't, couldn't catch up to it. So two RBIs there for the catcher, Brandt, and that's going to bring up the first baseman, Charlie Novak. And just like that, the game is tied 3-3, and Eastview has hit three hits in a row. Yeah, that one just had eyes. I mean, it was not well struck, but it was well placed. And he yeah. got it just under the glove of the second baseman. So unfortunately, you know, he, like you said, he, he knocks that down. He, he doesn't maybe get the out, but he right. saves the run. Yep. Yeah, and, and then and on top of that, right, you save the run, and then you also have a double play opportunity, which you still do now. So there's our fourth hit in a row. As Novak pops that one, to, oh, Joe Anderson fumbles it. And just like that now, Excellent base running by Novak as he slides into second on that bobble by Anderson. And Brandt scoots into third, and now you have second and third and still nobody out. So just like you mentioned, maybe you gave him the announcer jinx. Will Mitchell had six in a row that he set down, and then just like that, four hits in a row, and uh, Eastview's out hitting Egan 5-3. Yeah, I, I should know the, the broadcaster's curse is a real thing. I, I don't know what I was thinking. I apologize to any of the Egan faithful listening out there. I will try to avoid that moving forward. That was a well that was a well hit ball and unfortunately the, the bobble out in the outfield allowed the runner to get from second to third because he had stopped at second right. base. Then the second yeah. Unfortunate play was was the throw going there, allowing the runner to, to advance from first right. to second, the, the base hit. So I know that's and that's the, you know that's a tough thing. Those are the things that you have to uh, you know you know it's early in the season. I understand it, but those are the things that you have to try to mitigate you know and, and min minimize. Is you can't compound you know a bobble and then all of a sudden give up another base, right? Now he's you know another 90 feet closer. You take away potential of a uh, double play ball. Now you're set up for a potential suicide squeeze. I mean, there's just so many different factors that now come into play. That ball should have came into second, right? So slow roller gonna be foul. And this is gonna be the center fielder, which is Ryler. Nope, excuse me. The one behind, I think. No, no, one ahead. Third baseman, Charlie Riedel. How'd Riedel do in that first inning? Or second inning, that is. Oh, I got him first. down as a as a sacrifice fly. Yep. So he, he got the out, but Yeah, he hit that hot hit. shot out to left center. Correct. Got the run home. Yep, so he has an RBI in the season. Three threes are score. 0 1 count. Will Mitch on the mound. Nice curveball in there for a strike. Might be a slider. I still, I still need to get the uh, the pitching analysis and know what all these guys' pitches are. But I look a little sharper than a curveball to me, but it might have been a curveball. So many guys, you know, now have given up on curveballs and I'm throwing sliders. You know, it's, a lot of guys are going fastball, slider, changing. 
0-2 counts, this should be a waste pitch, should be a fastball low and out. Check swing, home plate up, gives it to him. I always, you know, as a pitcher you love it, as a hitter you hate that, right? Because you're like, hey, you, you, you use, your, use your mate, mate. Yeah, big, a big out there. Yes. That, that was really needed for Egan to try and keep this inning as, as low scoring as possible. Again, you've still got two on with just the one out. So Correct. Another, another big at bat here. Center fielder is going to be Ryler Kronberg. Mitchell's on the mound. He's given up five hits and three runs here early on. Heater right by him for a strike. It looks like Egan's playing maybe mid. Actually, they're playing pretty normal. It looks like Eckerly might be up a step. Cunningham's still playing back. Lockmeyer's playing normal. Same with King. King's playing well off the line, which sometimes will tell you that, you know, Mitchell and the game plan might be to pitch him away, right? If he's hugging third baseline a little bit more, that might look like he was going to suicide squeeze attempt, but kind of a safety squeeze, right? Because the pinch runner Macaroon was not uh, breaking on the pitch. So quickly 0-2, so it'll be interesting to see what Mitchell goes through in his bag here. He goes back to that kind of curveball low outside, maybe tries to paint a corner, or maybe even you know, the old fastball, right? The sky's the limit pitch. Yeah, at 0 2, he's really got a lot of options. He's coming off of a strikeout, obviously wants a second one here. It would be huge to get that second out and see if they can't strand runners. But yeah, this is, a, this is a big pitch. Yeah. So the pinch runner, Macaroon's in for the catcher, Novak. Here's that 0 2 pitch, corner pitch, strike three on the, fat, on the uh, curveball for Mitchell's third strikeout. He's gotten two in a row that have been his biggest strikeouts of the game as he hopes to bear down one more time to keep Macaroon, the pinch runner, at third as well as Novak at second. So that's gonna bring up the second baseman, which is Ben Schmitz. Two outs here. Play's gonna be once again at first. Schmitz calls time as Mitchell was taking a little time here to get that first pitch. What did uh, Schmitz do his first at bat? He grounded out to third base. So okay. That was the first out of the second inning, okay. one, two, three inning. Sure. Fastball up high. Looked like Lundenberg wanted that one low and out. <laughs> Had to quickly adjust on the heater up high. As the season goes on, our next broadcast, I'll probably have a little bit better idea of, uh, like I said, the pitching staff's pitches as well as their speeds. But you know what? This is the first game for everyone, so we're all just kind of jumping in and doing it. Curveball is out. Quickly 2 0. As I said, Mitchell does have experience. Pitched uh, five games last year, three starts, 1 0, 14 innings pitched, and he did average a K per inning. 2 0 pitch to Schmitz, almost catches Schmitz in the helmet, and it's quickly 3-0. And I wouldn't say that they're necessarily you know, pitching around him here. Uh, I mean, they, they got seven, eight, nine, so they got Isaiah Jones coming up. Just not kind of getting a feel or a grip on those pitches, it seems like. Yeah, that one definitely looked like it got away from him. He, he wasn't looking to throw one right. up and in with a 2-0 with a count, but yeah. he does have first base open, Correct. so he can be a little more cautious here, especially yep. at 3-0. Well, and that was a curveball. I mean, you know, you, you see a curveball up that high, you just know that it was. it's all about either just slipping out of the hands or just where he released it, right? So 3-0, two Schmitz, fastball over for a low ball, so four-pitch walk. That's going to be the third walk of the day for Mitchell. That's going to bring up the right fielder is Isaiah Jones. That's right, uh, Jones, another hot shot. He had the hot shot to uh, Eckerly, right? Yeah, that was the, the second second grounder, consecutive grounder of the inning. It was yeah. a nice nice backhand play by Eckerly. Didn't have to go too far for it, but scooped it off the ground. Well, yeah. well played and a nice strong throw to first. Yeah, I was, that's what I was going to mention too. I mean, it was, and Eckerly does some pitching as well too, so you know he's got a strong arm. So bases are full, curveball in there for a strike. We have the pinch runner, Macaroon. Is at third. We have the cats here. We have the first baseman Novak is at second, and then now Schmitz, the second baseman, is at first. So two consecutive walks after that big hit by the catcher Brant, and that was two RBI single by Brant, the catcher. Yes, that yeah. is true. And that's what tied it up. Yeah, because there are guys on second and third when yep. you get that after the double by Sutter. Yep. yep. 
Yeah, and DeSutter's the one that almost put it out of the park. Right, yeah, the monster was the only thing preventing yeah. that one from being right. the first home run of the season. Yeah, absolutely. 1-1 one, one count, two down here, top of the third. 3-3 three, three game, fastball's up and out, so it's getting tough time here now at 2-1. And, a li you know, I guess uh, I wouldn't say the wind held that back, even though the wind is kind of a cross when it's going out to right. It wasn't as gusting as much on, on the Sutter's hit as it is now maybe a little bit. 2-1, big swing. Puts big it by him for 2-2. Two, two. Big pitch. You don't want to go 3-1 with the yeah, bases absolutely. loaded. The, that's not the, the best situation for the pitcher. Getting strike two there was huge. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, what's so important here in this situation with base load is just constant communication, right? Covering up the bases, getting the short out. Curveball misses up. So now it's 3-2. So now your play is going to be at first unless it's hit directly at you. Can you step on the bag maybe in Theo King's side? Runners will be moving on the pitch. The big payoff pitch here as Mitchell tries to get the Wildcats back in the dugout for a tie game. Fastball hit Ooh. up the middle. Base hit. Fielded. Strong throw into home. Knockdown by Lockemeyer. That's going to bring in Macaroon as well as Novak. As Isaiah Jones comes through with a big full count, two out, two RBI single. That is the... Let's see, what is that? That is the fifth hit of the inning, as well as the fourth run of the inning. So Mitchell's gonna try to start this at bat over now as he has runners on first and third, two down. Eastview taking the lead here. They were down three to one going to the top of the third, answered with four quick runs after uh, Mitchell did an excellent job of looking like he was gonna get out of it. Yeah, he hit that one right up the middle. No chance there for Eckerly. Made a good effort at yeah. the play. Unfortunately, you know, with the bases loaded and, and a full count, that you know the the runners are off. Yeah. You know, as soon as the ball's pitched, so easily yeah. scoring two. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if Eckerly if he gets a glove on it, it's, you know, and that's no guarantee that he even saves that run. Right? The guy's already in motion. He might be coming all the way around. Oh. Fouled off the leg. You know, and, and then plus he's deep. You know, he's gonna be deep deep grass behind the base, I and mean, that's a long throw, you know, if he does get up to try to make it out at home. More or less even trying to go to first, right? And it looks like uh, Jones can, can scoot a little bit, so. And it looks like, too, I mean, the other thing, too, is, uh, you know, a, a righty on the mound, you know, he finishes it, he finishes towards the first base side, so he just wasn't really in a fielding position to try to knock that down with a glove or a foot. 0-1 count, two down. Runners on the corner, Kerb on their first strike. As we have Schmitz at second, Jones at first. So that base hit sent Schmitz all the way over to third. Yeah. Oh yeah, Schmitz at third, excuse me, I said second, correct. 0-2, oh, two. two outs, 5-3 score. Just a little throw over to see if he's gonna be taken off. Yeah, usually after a guy, you know, on a cold day, a guy that uh, either fouls one, you know, off his leg, then you want to kind of probably go, you know, something hard, you know, hard slider, hard curveball away, you know, because he just doesn't have a lot of, you know, he's still feeling a little tingling in that front foot. Long half inning here for Egan. Be yeah. really good to, to get this one. Of course, the Lightning have batted around yeah. so far. Yeah. 0 2 pitch, curveball, half swing, fielded by Eckerly as he touches second on his own for an unassisted out. But with that being said, Eastview does come back with four runs on five hits, no errors, and two left on as they take a 5 to 3 lead going into the bottom of the third. We'll be back in 60 seconds for the bottom of the third action here today with Eastview traveling over to Egan. To make yourself feel okay to drive, CWX. Ah. 
you're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, it's regular you. How you holding up? Nothing wrong with getting help. If I promise to look into it, will you drop it and help me build this fence? <laughs> now you need my help. If you or a veteran you know needs support, don't wait. Reach out. Find resources at va.gov slash reach. Alrighty, we're back. Let's enjoy a little bit of that in-between inning music there for a second. DJ doing an excellent job up in the booth. You know, I used to do that too. I mean, I was a, I was a many hat guy, Skip. I, I was telling you a story before. I think the first year, uh, so this is Coach Butler's eighth season as a head coach. Uh, for some context, I played college baseball with Coach Butler for uh, multiple seasons at Concordia St. Paul. So when he took over, he needed a, a scoreboard guy, needed a music guy, and he needed a PA guy. Well, then that first year, all of a sudden, I think towards the end of the year, Egan TV started doing, wanted to do a game or two. So there was a game, no lie, there was a game, and I did this numerous times. There was a game where I did the game play-by-play -play, all by myself. I would hit the cough button to do now batting for the PA. I would try to do as much music as I could in between innings. We didn't have walk-up songs. And then on top of that, I was also having to keep track of the scoreboard. So... You know what? You stay in the game and you just you figure out a way to stay busy, right? You that's know, a lot. Goes. That's a lot of hats. Yeah. I mean, I've I've worn a couple myself, but man, that that's in a in a baseball game especially yeah. where there's a lot going on, right. you know, every every pitch, everything. Right. Yeah, I'm impressed. I, I mean, it's it's slower pace, I get it, but it was the scoreboard was the, was the one that, you know, cuz you're talking and you're trying to keep track of pitches and hits and outs, you know what I mean, and not make a mistake, you know, and stuff like that. I mean, I felt like that was the one thing at times when I was when I'd be broadcasting that would get kind of put to the side sometimes. It was easy to hit the cough button, you know, and then just say now bad and then just jump back in and talk. So we got the catcher, the sophomore, Brandon Lunenborg at the plate. As he sees a second ball, so two one. And as I mentioned earlier, Skip might pass along some stats by Lunenborg as he had a wonderful freshman campaign last year behind the plate. Ball outside. Yeah, he, he's got some amazing numbers here. You know, 743 OPS, second on the team and on base percentage, first in base on balls, first in team RBI. So yeah. really a, a great season. Yeah. And a good eye. And, and you tend to see that, right? You tend to see uh, that catchers, as we get a 3-2 count here, as that strike comes in from the center. I mean, you tend to see that catchers obviously have a good eye at the end of the play, right? They, not only do they have a good eye because they know the zone, but they also know the zone that the, that the ump is calling that day, right? Exactly, yeah, now that we're in the, the third inning. All right, hot shot over to Riedel. Riedel's throw is in time over to Novak on that 3-2 pitch by DeSutter. So I'm, I'm interested to see how DeSutter does here in this third hey, inning because it seemed like uh, even though Egan, you know, even though Egan put up one run that last inning, it did seem like his stuff was getting a little sharper as, as the inning went on. So Brody Illon, he's got uh, Johnny Cash. He's got a little throwback for his walk-up music. The DH today, as we said that Brody last year primarily was a freshman pitcher, second on the team in innings to Lockenmeyer. Curve on their strike, so lefty-lefty matchup. And you know what, the other thing I was gonna mention, Skip, is that it does seem that the NBA type of shoes have carried over to the, to the high school game, as you see the colorful, Colorful kick says Illa takes one off the old elbow pad. The Barry Bonds right there. So first hit by pitch of the day by DeSutter. But I was going to mention, I mean, uh, let's see here. Brant's got some color to his kicks, and uh, DeSutter's got some flamingo shoes out there. Pink and light blues. I didn't know that LeBron and KD made baseball shoes these days. You gotta, you gotta keep it interesting at, at every sport, right? There's no reason why basketball players should have all the fun. Exactly. Fake bunt in there for a strike. Throw down to Novak, not in time as Ila gets back. And this is Tate Gage. What Tate Gage do last at bat? Get a line drive to left field for a base hit. Yeah, absolutely. He might even had an RBI too, if I remember correctly. He might have brought in. Eckerly. I know that, that bunt was the air that brought in the first run. I think he brought in the second run with Eckerly on the base. Yep, head. I think you're right. Yeah. So Gage trying to keep that thousand batting average going. As we mentioned before, uh, Gage saw some spot duty last year. 
kind of a jack of all trades if I remember correctly. He's playing center now. He's taking over for the uh, exceptional center fielder Gio George Anderson who played center for I believe shoot maybe four years, all four years if not for sure three. I know one of those years he was hurt. He was an excellent running back too. Came into the season a little hurt. But Gage, uh, if I remember correctly, can play some center. Obviously playing center today. Left and also play some third. Uh, and the Gage family, I think this is, his, is either the second or third son that's came through the program for Coach Butler. Change up on the outside corner for a ball. One, two, count. One out. We got Illa at first. Egan trying to uh, keep that perfect streak of scoring a run every inning here in the early season. A big league by Illa. As he's going, ball hit to DeSutter. DeSutter takes a look, checks it, gets the out at first to Novak. Roundabout way, Gage does the job done by sending Illo over to second. And now it's gonna bring up the senior, Danny Lockenmeyer, the first baseman. Illa taking off with the pitch, ran himself out of a potential double play yeah. right there. Nice job. Yeah. It, it, it looked like DeSutter was thinking about it still, right? He, he picked yeah. that up and he looked at second and then thought better of it. You know, I'm just gonna get the safe play yep. for out number two. There's no reason to, to chance not getting anything on that play. Absolutely. Yeah. Fastball in there for a strike. So kind of like what I mentioned before, it does seem that uh, Egan did a good job of getting to DeSutter early in those first two innings, but it did seem to me at least that his stuff was getting sharper as that second inning was moving on. And now he's starting to kind of paint that outside corner as well as uh, get a little bit more snap on his curveball here in this third inning. Well, in both the uh, first and second inning, I know our our scores say that there are two errors right. on Eastview. The, the scoreboard says one. I'm going with my official, yeah. my official non-official stats. Yeah. Although I think, all, I mean, all of his runs are earned, but obviously those errors did contribute to moving some of those runners over. You know what I mean? Yep. Moving runners over and so forth. 0-2 oh, count to the first baseman, senior Danny Lachmer, who's going to be doing the uh, first base duties as well as a stud starting pitcher. And he led the team last year in innings pitch, kind of had all the stats last year. Lockemeyer on the pitching side, 40 innings pitch, eight games, eight starts, two and oh. Uh, he was a 45 strikeout guy, so more than one an inning, and a 2.083 ERA. Swing and miss, and that's gonna be DeSutter's fourth K of the day. So for Egan, they get no runs on no hits, no errors, and one left down. We'll be back as a 5-3 score as the visiting Eastview is leading Egan. We'll be back in 60 seconds here for the top of the fourth inning. My character Shazam knows all about growing up in a family full of teenage superheroes. They're bold. Where's everyone going? To fight crime. Okay. Adventurous. Shazam! There's never a dull moment. And no matter what happens, they'll always have your back. All they need is a place to grow and be themselves. And the best part is, you don't have to be a superhero to adopt a teen. Learn more about adopting a teen from foster care. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. You can't imagine the reward. Donating pet food can keep families together. Pets and people belong together. Learn more at PetsAndPeopleTogether.org. Okay, welcome back. Will Mitchell still on the mound, the sophomore. And uh, so far through three innings of pitch, pitching for Will, he's got uh, given up five hits, excuse me, six hits, three walks, three Ks, and all those Ks were big outs, as Skip mentioned earlier, and as well as giving up uh, five earned runs here early on. I think he's faced, if my numbers are correctly, nine. And then last inning, I think he faced another full lineup, right? So yeah, so he's faced 18 already, so on. So I mean, the other thing we'll have to talk, we'll have to keep an eye on, first game of the year, so you have to always you know, be cautious of uh, not only pitch count, right, which obviously has come into play now the last couple of years in the Minnesota State High School League, uh, but at the same time too, just you don't want to overdo somebody on their first you know, out in the season, right? So what would you suggest is the, the, the top number for game one here for a pitch count. What do you think that he'll be held to? Yeah, I mean, obviously, as he gets a strike across to the uh, leadoff hitter, Lewis Rogers, who's been on base, I believe, both times here today. Um, right, he's got two hits, I think, is our leadoff hitter. That is correct. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's probably it's you know it's it's probably a lot of game feel, right? I'm sure that you know Egan would love to have him see a quick inning, you know, and maybe even run him out for the fifth. And then now maybe you could bring your reliever in and maybe in the sixth. And at the, at the time, you maybe hope that it's the lower part of the lineup. High moonshot hit over, and it's going to be caught by Eckerly. Looked like for a second uh, King lost that in the clouds. No eclipse factor today, so we're good there. But a nice job by Mitchell of coaxing uh, Rogers, and Rogers is going to be two for three. But 666 is still a good average to start the year, it's, right? It's Skip? not a bad way to start, absolutely. <laughs> and a nice job there by Eckerly fighting the wind. I think that thing yeah. continued to push itself towards yeah. second base. It, yeah. You know, it started off where it looked like the third baseman might have the play, yeah. and then all of a sudden he had to he had to adjust and let Eckerly oh. take that one. Fastball gets out of the way to his counterpart, pitcher DeSutter, the pitcher DH. Excellent hustle by our umpire today. Gets a point from the announcer. So one out here to Sutter, who had the big moonshot out to left. And originally, too, like when it was hit, I felt like Will Mitchell thought it was coming to him. I mean, the way he looked up, he's like, am I going to have to catch this? 1-0 pitch, fastball on the outside corner is low. Yeah, I think that's kind of the thing, right? I believe... Um, you know, I believe it's 105 pitch. Is that for relievers and like 80 some for starters? I'll have to get the, uh, the actual numbers um, because it's like, I think like relievers can do a little bit more. You know, it's like 105 and so many days and then like starters are like 80 some and you can start in that bat with like 84, you know what I mean? And maybe the pitch count's 85. Um, but yeah, I think if, if you're Egan, right, you don't want to jump into your kind of uh, younger, maybe inexperienced relievers, you know, sooner than sooner than you have to, right? So you want to ride some experience. I think if he could get through, you know, whether it's one, two, three, or even this force four hitters, you know, now if you can have a quick inning and then the fifth, now you can have your relievers come in, you know, face maybe eight, nine to start the inning, right? So that's a walk, and that's going to be the fourth one of the day for Mitchell as the Sutter goes down the line. The Sutter having a good day at the plate. Yeah, his second walk of the day so far. He also had that big double to left field, so he's he's batting a thousand already. Absolutely, absolutely. That'll bring up the catcher Nick Brandt, who had a big hit uh, last inning. Got the rally going, so to say, as they had four hits in a row. I believe what, what the number was, right? Four or five hits in a row last inning. Yeah, four hits in a row, and they all roll. ended up scoring. Yep, exactly. Be interesting to see if uh, Eastview puts the Sutter in motion, try to stay away from a double play ball. So far today, I think if my memory serves me correctly, it's been two ground outs, so one to King and one to Eckerly, and then obviously a base hit up the middle. So for the most part, it looks like Mitchell's kind of more of a fly ball pitcher in a sense, right? Yeah, a couple ground ball hits. Yeah, uh, I've got, I've got uh, one, two, three. Looks like four ground ball outs. But yeah, yeah. most multi balls hit up in the air. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah, he had there was one up back to the pitcher and so forth. Good curveball inside as he came inside for a strike. And like I said before, Brand is not afraid to hug the plate. Mitchell's not afraid to obviously own the inside of the corner as well. One one count, one out. As he got Rogers out for the first out of the inning on a towering fly ball that Eckerly made a nice play and not giving up on, as it looked like we said was going over to third, and the wind pushed it over to right. We have uh, start of the game. They said it was 12 to 14 mile an hour. Ooh, quick tag there by Lockmar. Close play. Uh, before the game, they said 12 to 14 miles per hour southwest wind that'd be kind of pushing out to right, right center. I, I would have to imagine we're at least up to 20, 25 here at times. Yeah, it's definitely gusting higher than 12 to 14. Yeah. And it's it's just cool enough to yeah. where it, you know, you can, the noticeable difference when the clouds right. open go away and, and we get a little bit of sunshine in our backs. I mean, it just feels like, like somebody turned on a heating blanket. Yes, absolutely. Nice. Another nice Edge. pitch inside, absolutely, 0-2 count. You know, the one thing that I do wonder, um, one thing I do wonder, um, as far as rule, you know, the, the major league rule changes that may come down to the high school level. I'm not saying all of them. I mean, they're not going to force, you know, teams to have electrical, you know, behind home plate and out in the outfield for, you know, pitch, you know, time in between pitches for hitters and pitchers. I understand that. The one, the one, the one change though, I wonder is if they're ever going to go to, you know, limiting the, the throws over, you know, the pickoff attempts. Um, I, I, I don't think that's a bad thing. I'm not saying that they should get rid of it, because you know, at the same time you're trying to limit their leads, you're trying to limit the run game and so forth. But I just wonder at times if that's something that they're going to say, hey, 
two times is enough. Yeah, yeah. You want to you want to keep the game moving. I know right. there's a limit too on, on the number of mound visits. Correct. You know, in, in the major leagues and which hasn't came down yet to the to the high school. Exactly. Level. And then and they're they're doing a lot to to speed things up in, right. in major league baseball, which I think, in, in my opinion, was needed. Yes. And, and I, I wish the the powers that be would, would do the same for college football, but that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> <laughs> well. If we get a rain delay, we could dive into all the other sports that we <laughs> exactly. want to change, right? As we see another throw over, so I think that's the fourth. So, but yeah, no, I, I just think that that's that's one that I could I could see him go. Well, you know, do we need to be throwing over that many times? Now, coaches might say, hey, you know, he throws a bad one. Now all of a sudden, he just threw us a triple. Right now, the guy's on third, so coaches might not want to go for it either. O2 count, one down, popped up. This one's gonna stay in. This one's gonna be hit to Eckerly as he travels out to short center field for the catch. So Eckley's got uh, two, two putouts here on two pop flies as they're able to get out the hot hitting Nick Brandt. And that's gonna bring up the first baseman, Charlie Novak, as we have DeSutter still at first. Eckley responsible for the last three outs as he had the unassisted ground out to end the previous inning. So a weird statistical. right thing you don't see very Someone often. Someone say he has a main in his glove, right? <laughs> All right, so Mitchell pitching here to Novak. To Sutter still at first, and he, you know, he, he just wants to keep getting that uh, pitcher to slide into first, I think. And then we do see to Sutter take off. So whether uh, Egan or Mitchell knew something there, the cat and mouse game of baseball in full effect here the first game of the season. They give a little credit to the scouting report, right? They yeah. they felt like he was going to move, and yeah. eventually they were proven right. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously it was, you know, and whether that, I mean, it wasn't a straight steal because obviously uh, Novak went after it, so potentially just a uh, hit and run put in place. 0-1 count, two down here. Will Mitchell on the mound. Catcher is uh, Brandon Lundenborg. Another throw over to Lockenmeyer. You know, maybe we could work something out with our sponsors and be, uh, you know, some somebody listening at home gets a free Chick-fil-A sandwich or something. If uh, if you throw over, you know, more than five times with the same guy on first, <laughs> I think that's something we could do. I don't I don't know what the uh, the proper wording would be to make it slick for a slogan. Hot shot, two hopper, Cunningham scoops, throws, Lockenmeyer in time for the third out of the inning. So Eastview in the top of the fourth. No runs and no hits, no errors. One left on. We'll keep it here going into the bottom of the fourth. So 5-3 is our score. Just give you the quick rundown here. Uh, Eastview, six hits to Egan's three. We have two errors, but the, the uh, scoreboard says one. And uh, I'm going to pass it over to Skip here. He's going to maybe give us some more stats here, kind of what, what you've seen here early on for both teams as far as hitting, let's just say. Well, both teams started off well in the first, right? I mean, with a, with a two to one game, I really liked how Egan bounced back by giving up, you know, they gave up a run in the top half, and they come right back with two, the, the first two guys getting on base, uh, Anderson with the base on balls, actually lined one into right field. Yep. And then Egan added another one in the second, which was nice. They got a benefit of, you know, a run with, with no hits, benefit yep. of an error there. Yep. But then the, the big the big top of the third for Eastview was was one that you know gives us the difference in the game yep. and why Eastview has that that five to three lead with the four, the first four guys all reaching base all of them coming around to score yeah and all on base hits exactly right? yeah I they, mean it's just I mean you, you can watch a lot of baseball right you just don't see very often where you just four clean hits in a row you know you might get four hits in an inning but you're probably broken up by a walk or a hit by pitch or a ground out or a sacrifice fly to score a run, right? But to see four straight hits all hit clean, um, you just don't see that very often. Right? Yeah, and my notes too say, you know, a couple of them were, were line drives, yeah. those were well hit. Yep. They had one ground ball hit, but then the, the double off the, the green exactly. monster in left field. Yep. So yeah, they were definitely tagging the ball yep. well in, no, in that third inning. So I, I think, I don't know what we got over here. We got a little bit of confusion. I don't know if it's uh, the one time. figuring out what pitcher we got, a catching issue, equipment issue. So we're getting something figured out. So we'll just keep talking through it here. The sun's coming out. It's a beautiful day here at the park. First game of the season, as we said, it was supposed to be yesterday, but uh, I think uh, that rain over the weekend, probably uh, maybe some puddles on the field. And uh, the other option was to do the game on Friday. 
I thought that, you know, I, I guess I haven't looked at what Egan or Eastview's schedule is this week. Um, I know Egan has a home game tomorrow, so my thought was, because there was potentially supposed to be rain yesterday, you know, and it was supposed to be kind of hard rain at night, which didn't happen, luckily. I was, what I was worried was that they were going to try to get this game in tomorrow on a sloppy field and then have to play on another sloppy field on Wednesday, but it's all working out here, so. And yeah. And obviously, as you know too, Skip, you've done enough of these high school games that, you know, the big thing is, is just get them in as early as you exactly, can. Exactly, yes. Because you don't want to backload your season where all of a sudden now you're playing four games in five days to finish out the regular season. And then you're sitting there going, well, do we even have pitching for that, right? Right. And selfishly, I was really glad that they were able to get this one in today because Friday I would not have been available. Right. I've, I've got something going on, you know, with the family. But when you look ahead to this weekend's weather, though, it's, boy, a, oh. a Saturday or a Sunday ball game would have been yeah. nice. It's looking like 70 degrees is in the in the – yeah. Forecast. Yeah, it's boy, just gonna keep getting. It's just gonna keep building, right? Um, so yeah, I don't know what happened there. I don't know if the Sutter had maybe a, either a glove issue or maybe even a blister issue. Something was going on. Um, He's but, probably sore from diving into first base all the time. <laughs> that, that could have been it. That could have been, or maybe there was blood. Maybe something from sliding so much. I don't know. We'll we'll figure it out here. But the Sutter's smiling. I think uh, whether it's a little bit of a cat and mouse. I'm sure the E guys are, are kind of wondering what took them so long, but. We're ready to go, and you never know after a long time like that. I mean, we'll see. Does he come back and hit the strike zone sharp, or, or is he a little erratic here early on, and maybe Egan can try to get some runners on base early. So first guy to test him out is going to be the second base from Matt Cunningham. So made the last play of the inning. Sometimes they say, you know, you make a play, come up bat right away, you're ready to go. So we'll see what we get from Cunningham. I believe is a senior this year. Last year primarily was a shortstop as well as a little bit of relief pitching. Sutter's uh, heaters hit to Schmidt. Schmidt's over to Novak in time. One pitch, one out. Good contact by Cunningham, but was a little bit behind on that heater by DeSutter. Yeah, he hit it right at the second baseman, unfortunately, but he did, he did make good contact, yeah. like you said, so just just didn't get the the right placement on that yeah, ball. Yeah, yeah, it was a little bit up in the zone. You know, he just crowned into the ground. Theo King's up, third baseman. If memory serves me, I think I have it on that sheet. I believe Theo is a junior this season. That is right? correct. Okay. Strike in there for DeSutter in the outside corner. Theo, Theo's been counted on here quite a bit more than, than last year when he saw a little bit duty towards the end of the season. Ground ball hit over to Riedel. Riedel fields it cleanly, throw over to Novak in time. And now we're starting to see a clean defense from Eastview, and we're also starting to see the Sutter settle in here. And that's kind of what we, uh, Skip and I talked about during one of those breaks in between innings was from my recollection, that uh, DeSutter's a strong pitcher, and it just seemed like that, you know, end of the second, he was starting to get a better grip and feel for his pitches and was settling in, and it just seemed that uh, it might be slim pickings here for Egan, you know, the rest of the way as well as, as long as DeSutter's in the game. Yeah, I was just looking through the last couple of innings trying to figure out when was the last time that Egan hit one up in the air, and it's been a while. I mean, yeah. it's been a lot of ground balls. There's been a couple of strikeouts, yep. even an, an error on, on one play, but it's been – it's been a lot of balls hit on the ground. Yeah. It's been since the first inning, since they even hit a, a fly ball. Absolutely, absolutely. Eddie King, the right fielder, is up to the plate. Quickly down, uh, I believe, 02, but the board says 01. It might still be 01. Um, and really, that last inning, the only, and you can leave it. I think, there it is, it's 02. But, you know, that last inning, too, the only, you know, Illa, Illa reached first base, and that was on an on a inside fastball that he got beamed on. You know, so, I mean, it wasn't like he walked somebody. I mean, that's the thing. He's just, he's been rolling right now. One, two count, two down. Egan trailing five, three here in the bottom of the fourth. Opening day, season opener here at Egan. Sutter's pitch on one, two, strike three. And that's the Sutter's fifth strikeout. Oh no, excuse me, I jumped the gun there. Popped out of the glove of Brandt. I didn't oh, even see I it. Oh, I missed it too. Yeah. Popped out of the glove. And I'm going to mess up my stats here. I was, he had five, I was ready to say he had five Ks. He's sitting on four. All right, so Eddie stays alive. 
Eddie Money trying to hit one down the line here. Scoot for two. Fouls another one off. Nice job by Moore. He's fouled off all the strikes here this inning. Eddie Moore batting in the ninth spot, playing right field, trying to flip the order over to get Joe Anderson, the left fielder in, lead off. Looks like he's about a half second behind right. on a couple of these pitches. He's falling them off to the, yeah. to the third base third side. Third base side, yeah. Nice eyes there on the uh, curveball that's low and out. 2-2 two -two count, two down. As we said, 5-3 score. Eastview, Lightning. Short drive for Eastview today against their city rival, Egan. Here's the pitch, 2-2, outside, low. Oh, -ho! up cocks the hammer to the dismay of the Egan faithful for the fifth strikeout of the day for DeSutter. So Egan goes down in order, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. We'll be back, 60 seconds for the top of the fifth inning here at Egan against Eastview. Honey, what I think you need is a socket wrench. I play JV basketball. I'm sorry, I don't think it looks right. This is good, that. and it's all is good, it, baby. Is it really all good? If you love me enough to routinely test your handyman skills, not to mention the strength of your marriage, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. I'm gonna call my dad. Okay, we're back and we got a junior for his first outing of the season. This is gonna be Jackson Tasalis. He's gonna be on the mound. I got I a little inside information that he potentially would be uh, relieving today, whether he was the first or second in relief. Unfortunately, I don't have the uh, pitching report that Burt Blylev would normally bring you. Looks like he comes kind of three quarter. But we get to see uh, the junior Jackson Tasalis here jump in. So the book's closed on Mitchell. Mitchell does go four innings, does give up six hits, four walks, three Ks, five runs, and he faced 18, 22 hitters on the day for Mitchell. So we get to see Jackson DeSalas, first time on the mound for a varsity outing, and he's gonna face right away out of the gate. It's gonna be the third baseman, Charlie Riedel. Case. And I was proud, you know. I, I was like, I was, you know, I think part of it of being an announcer is you just like the challenge of seeing names and seeing if you can, you know, say it properly the first time before somebody tells you. I saw that one. I, I was a little bit, uh, I was interested if, if the T was going to be heavy or if the T was going to be silent, but it's a hard T. So Tasalis gets a strike right away for his first pitch on varsity and then one behind the back. So he's bringing in a little Nolan Ryan action here early on. The junior, throw a strike, throw one behind, keep a straight face, probably come with a hard knee buckling curveball here, Skip, for the uh, next pitch. I think maybe he thought one of the guys over my right shoulder looked like the Bull Durham Bull. Right. Aim it at the bull. Hot shot, out to center, and Gage has to take Two steps to his right for the first out of the inning as DeSalas gets his first recorded out as a varsity pitcher. And that's gonna bring up the center fielder, Riley Kronberg. How's Kronberg been here today so far for a skip? His last at bat back in the third inning, he struck out looking okay. and the first at bat he grounded back up to the pitcher, so okay. he's 0 for 2. All right, high strike in there for DeSalas. Gives Kronberg a little look back. 
quickly 0-1. Across the infield, we have King at third. As we see the pitch, ball's hit deep down the line and foul. I couldn't even track that. I mean, by the time it was hit, I didn't even, I have a pull in the way a little bit too. But I, I kind of was just watching the left fielder Anderson because if he was looking straight up, I knew then that might be a home run. All right, so quickly 0-2, we do have Theo King at third, Ryan Eckley at short, Matt Cunningham at second, Danny Lockemeyer at first. 0-2 pitch, swung out, foul back, nice inside curve. Not afraid to come inside. Across the outfield for the E Wildcats, Joe Anderson in left, Tate Gage in center, and Eddie Moore in right and doing the catching, which you'll see him all season, bar an injury, will be Brandon Lunningborg. 0-2 pitch. A little squibber. Bounces off. Bare hand picked up by Eckley. Great play. Great play by Eckley. To Salas tried to get a little glove on it. I thought he was going to kind of kick it, you know, that spin would kick too far off away from Eckerly. What a play by Eckerly, Skip. Jeez. Yeah, the 1 6 3 picked it up with the bare hands at Eckerly. He's having a whale of a game out there as a shortstop. He's putting everything, everything he needs to away, getting a lot of outs. And that could be the type of out that could get the offense going as well if Tosales get the boys back in the dugout here quickly. As we see Ben Schmitz, the second baseman, step in. Ben Schmitz re reached, I believe, his last at bat. Reach base, maybe a base hit if I Yeah, base correctly. on balls and oh. grounded out. And then now he gets hit by pitch. All right, so one thing you have to like though by uh, Tosales in his first ever outing with Egan is he's not afraid to pitch inside, especially early on in the at-bat. Yeah, he's already thrown one behind. Right, exactly, we we're, <laughs> we're both thinking the same thing there. All right, so this will be the first time we see uh, Tassalas out of the stretch here as Isaiah Jones, the right fielder, steps in. Check swing, are they gonna check it? No, for a ball. So Schmitz reaches base for the second consecutive time. See if he uh, takes off here. Eastview yet to steal, even though we have seen him put runners in motion. Throw over. 1-0 count to Isaiah Jones, the right fielder. What Jones been doing today? He had a ground out to Eckerly in the second inning and then the last one got a, a two RBI base hit, yeah. the grounder up the middle. Yep, absolutely, yep, up the middle. And that's the play that Eckerly looked like he was real close to keeping in, but as we said, I mean, I don't think he would have to play at Jones at first who runs well, and I don't think he would, if he does you know, stop it, he's not gonna be able to get up and throw out uh, the runner because it was a 3-2 pitch with two outs, right? Ooh, a nice play, another throw over. I mean, with all these throw overs, I've seen about two that have been close. <laughs> right. I mean, it could happen. I guess you're also testing these umpires in their first game too to see what their, uh, their 2020 is still working good. And that's a tough call with the two umpire system. I mean, yeah. The guy behind the play can't make it to you. The guy standing out by yeah. in front of second base. I don't, you know, the, the people can't see it on the screen, right. but the, the second umpire is basically bet between the pitcher and the second baseman. Yep. All right, 1-1 one, one pitch, two down. To Salas on the outside corner and low at the knees. 5 threes are score. Eastview leading as they travel across town, take on Egan for the season opener and the South Suburban Conference opener as well. Beautiful day when the sun's out. Grounder to Eckerly. Eckerly's gonna go across the diamond in time to Lockenmeyer. So he takes the long throw, but the smart throw. And excellent outing by Tassalis as he faces four hitters and only hits one batter. And the highlight of that inning was the excellent barehanded scoop and throw off of the glove of Tassalis by the shortstop, Eckerly. Five threes are score. Back in 60 seconds here for the bottom of the fifth inning here at Egan. I'll see y'all.
got some batteries and two flashlights. What's up, champ? Cool. I feel like you get taller every time I see you. Congratulations, Brandon. All right, we're back. The senior leadoff left fielder, Joe Anderson, with some Drizzy in the background, some Drake for the kids out there. And he, uh, he let that song ride a little bit there, Skip. He had plenty of time to hear his whole track. I like that, I like that. <laughs> Joe has yet to put the ball in play. Okay, big swing though by Joe. Base on balls, came around to score in the first inning, okay. then struck out swinging in the second. Okay. Yeah, Joe's gonna be counting on to be more of an everyday player this year. Last year was a little more spot duty, DH duty, pinch hitting duty as that fastball misses inside, 1-1 one, one count. To Sutter on the mound for the fifth inning. He's got five Ks, giving up uh, three hits, two walks. He's uh, hit one and three runs. The unofficial pitch count is, I think, somewhere in the 60s. Okay. I haven't been exact on that. I'll try to improve sure. as the season goes on. Yeah, that's on. okay. That's all right. And you know what, the teams are the ones that are keeping track of the pitches. So if, if uh, one team tries to pitch a guy too long, I'm sure the, the uh, home team or the visiting team will be right on top of that. So we aren't, we aren't, uh, we aren't called upon to raise our hand and say, excuse us, up. something <laughs> exactly. isn't right here. 2-2 two -two count to uh, Anderson. Anderson's got some pop in his bat. Has had some speed as well with five stolen bases last year as he watches one in the dirt. So they can get Anderson on. This could be a big start. Plus, like you said, to Sutter up there in pitch count. I don't see anybody warming up yet for Eastview, but a couple things could happen. They could put Anderson in motion, hit and run. Ackerley's been swinging a good bat at it today. So this is a big pitch for the Sutter. 3-2 pitch, fastball, base hit, pass Novak, the diving Novak. Anderson gets his first hit of the season, batting 500. And that's gonna bring up the shortstop, Ryan Eckerley. Made an amazing play last inning. We'll see if that carries over here to the plate as he's been swinging a hot bat already this season. Yeah, first pitch swinging in the first inning, lined one to right field just over the second baseman's head for his first hit of the season and then struck out looking in the second. Okay. All right, so we'll see what Anderson does as he's hopping around at first. Now the other thing, Skip, that you'll notice as the season goes on, uh, a few years ago, I believe it was 2021, I think the year after COVID, maybe even the year before, and I'll get to it in a second here. Grounder up the middle, big hop to Schmitz. Schmitz over to Rogers. Rogers gonna have to hold on to it and just get the lead out. Nice job by Schmitz to come in and just make sure to get one. I think Schmitz was hoping to get a tag on Anderson there and then go to first for a double play, but the ball wasn't hit hard enough. The Sutter couldn't jump up and get it either. It's gonna bring up the catcher, the sophomore, Brandon Lundenberg. Uh, I'll get back to it real quick. Uh, as we get time here. One thing you'll notice though, as the season goes on here, Skip, is that a few years ago, Egan went to a more of a numerical system for their, for, their, uh, for their signs, as well as their, basically their running plays. So you'll see that all the guys have like that quarterback uh, wristband. Some guys have it on their arm, some of them have it over their belt. And what you'll hear, what you'll hear at times, and you'll hear as well, especially with these games on TV, you hear Coach Butler yell out a number, whether it's 221, 231. I don't know them all yet by heart, so I can't be here the guy that predicts everything, right? <laughs> but it is an interesting way, and I, I think, you know, it hasn't necessarily caught on across baseball, but um, I believe, if I remember correctly, that that uh, either Coach Butler got it from either his work with USA Baseball or even that some colleges were starting to use it, and Egan kind of adapted to it. So Eckley takes off, balls hit down the line, foul. Eckley couldn't find it there, almost that could have been a very bad double play ball. So with that kind of a numeric system, yep. that's something where I gotta believe, depending on what level you're playing at, it would be it would be interesting to see if other teams could pick up on that by paying attention to, to past games. You know, okay, this is the number they call, this yeah. is what happened, and you, you continue to mount, you know, gather no. that data over the course of a season, and all of a sudden now you feel like you can predict what's gonna happen. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, but I think I think what happens is is that, you know, you know, it's it, whether they use like a hot number, right? So maybe in the second inning it's the hot number's five. You know, I think they switch it up probably per inning. You know, that you're not giving the same number 
you know, multiple times throughout the game so that they don't catch on. Right? You know, let's just say 314 means hit and run. You know, then probably in the fourth inning, you might say, okay, you know, let's say the hit and run number is one. You might say, okay, well now if it's, you know, we're gonna do one as the first number, so now it's 134, right? Ball in the dirt, equally at first. One, two count, one out. So yeah, 143 is called, two, two count, yep, correct. And I think the Egan Faithful is waiting for the big, strong catcher to get into one here and shoot to the gap and see Eckerly run here. Two, two count. Ball in the outside corner, you can tell. Lundenborg was looking at him going, I'm the catcher, I've been saving you all game. Don't ring me up. I got up on the edge of my seat a little bit, just <laughs> waiting for that call third strike there. Yeah. Well, he did show off that strike three call two innings ago on a delayed call that he really did a punch out. And we got a pickoff play. We got a relay from Novak that throws it out to left field and Eckley is gonna be safe. So excellent move by the lefty to Sutter. Picks the right time to throw over, but the throw from Novak, and I think really what, what happened there, Skip, was I think there was a little confusion as to who was covering the base. You know, I think that that's why that throw looked like it was so far off. I think he was assuming that it was gonna be third baseman. I think uh, Schmitz was over there at second as well. You know, because he's covering anyways on the steal. So that's an air on the throw for East. Bottom of the fifth, 5-3. Lundenberg was first chance for RBI opportunity as he led the team in RBIs last season. 3-2 count, one down. Eckerly is at second. Fastball hit up the middle. Great play by Schmitz. Relay over to Novak in time. So Novak, excuse me, Schmitz saves Novak on that errant throw with a great diving play up the middle. Eckley goes over to third, robs Lunenberg of his first hit of the season. We'll see the DH Brody Illa come up. There's an outstanding defensive play there, not only saving the run, but getting up and getting the out at first base. Absolutely, I mean, I, you could tell in my voice, I mean, it was hit so hard up the middle. 2-3 hopper, I, you know, I didn't want to assume that it was a base hit and that Eckley was going to come around and score, but Schmidt's just a human eraser on that play. Curveball low and outside, 1-0 count to Brody Illa, who had a hit by pitch his last at bat as DeSutter tried to come inside on him. DeSutter started the game, this is his fifth inning if he completes it, still no action in the bullpen for either team. 2-0 as he looks to be uh, somewhat pitching around lefty-lefty matchup. Eckley at third. The big thing here is you do have an experienced catcher in Brandt, so he can be a brick wall and try to keep you know, a pass ball from getting by him and let Eckley come in from third. Fastball low on the knees in there for a strike to the dismay of Illa. Illa with no hits, but he's been on base both times. He sure. reached reach base in the first inning, an error on a throw yep. by the third baseman. Yep. Curveball in there for a strike. As it looks like the Sutter took something off on that one. 2-2 two, two count, two down. Eckerly on third. Reached second as an errant throw on a pickoff play. Went over to third on the amazing diving play by Schmitz to erase Lundenberg's hit and RBI. 2-2 two, two pitch to Illa. Outside corner, strike three. That's the sixth strikeout of the day. So Egan, no runs. Oops, no runs, no hits. One air and one left on. We'll be back in 60 seconds. It's a 5-3 ball game as a visiting Eastview leading Egan. We'll be back in 60 seconds for the done the hard part. You quit smoking. Now do the easy part and get scanned for lung cancer. If you smoked, you may still be at risk, but early detection could save your life. Talk to your doctor and learn more at savedbythescan.org. It's something about having that piece of paper. Some people think that's worth more than my skills. I've run this place for 20 years, but I still need to prove that I'm more than what you see on paper. so good they can't ignore you. It's the way my mind works. I don't want to hate her. All righty, 
Spice Girls. Who's your favorite Spice Girl, Skip, as we hear it in the background? I don't think I have a favorite Spice, but I, I do like the name Posh. Yeah. I'm gonna go Posh Spice. I think Posh has the most money in the bank account. Well, there you go. Right. I mean, Scary Spice is kind of a fun, fun one. I'm not gonna go that deep down memory lane. This is like, I mean, we're playing like mid to late 90s day. I don't know what, what's going on here today. I mean, how many of these players on the field even know these songs? That's well, what I was gonna say. I found that they're getting into the classic, well, yeah. classic music for them. It's absolutely. us, it's, it's our, you know, we grew up with. Right, absolutely. Alrighty, so we'll see if this is just a pinch hit and a re-entry or if this is an actual replacement, but Luke Macaron is going to step in. He's, he was the pitch runner for uh, the catcher Brant earlier on. Jackson Tassalis back on the mound for a second inning with a feeder for a strike right away as he keeps attacking the zone. Impressed with what we're seeing from uh, Tassalis here early on here, Skip. Yeah, so far so good. Looked really sharp in that in first inning of relief back in the fifth. Yeah. Well, and I think what's... And we see a beam. So I guess that's the one knock so far on Tosales is just a little bit of that inside fastball to righties, right? He's hit two batters, threw one behind the back. That's really been the only way that, uh, you know, obviously Eastview, I mean, Eastview's only had five at-bats against him, but um, I do like the way that he's not afraid to attack the zone, right? I important question for you, though. I was thinking about bringing up the hit-by-pitch in the previous inning. I yeah. didn't say it, but I was thinking it, and then right. he hit a, hit a batter there. Is that an, an, another level of the broadcaster's curse? Uh, I mean, there's so many thoughts. I mean, I wouldn't say that. You have to actually put it out in the universe. All right, right? okay. Yeah. That's good, because I don't, I don't want my thoughts coming to life. Right. I mean, you can start saying that, you know, you and I are going to buy, go buy lottery tickets and we're going to win. I mean, that, that's a good jinx to have, right? 1-0 count. Runner moving. Almost a pitch out, but Lundenberg can't get a handle on it. And Macaroon gets his first stolen base of the season. That's too bad because I don't think it was supposed to be a pitch out, but it, it worked out perfectly. He had a left-handed hitter in Lewis Rogers, the leadoff hitter. And, you know, ball was up and high. I mean, if he gets a good grip on it, maybe he has a chance to uh, eliminate that that runner. Now you have Macaroon at in scoring position and a hot bat in Rogers, who's uh, two for three in the day. Ground ball up the middle. Big hop to Eckerly, nice play. Hard throw in time to Lockemeyer. Macaroon runs over to third as Rogers moves the runner over. That's a, you know, one thing I will say, and, and I, I mean, maybe the arm was just as strong last year, but I mean, Eckerly has a cannon for an arm here today at short. Yeah, he's firing that ball over right? to first base, and everything looks like right on target. Yeah. Right? Just really sharp. He looks very confident. Yeah, absolutely. Shortstop. And just, you know, crispy clean as far as the, the leather work. So infield in now with a 5-3 deficit for Egan. Want to try to cut down that run. Cooper to Sutter, the pitcher slash DH, had the big bomb off of the uh, green monster. I think he's about... I don't know, I'd say maybe four or five feet away from home run. A heater on the outside corner, so DeSalas is not afraid of this top of the lineup. 0-2, now this is the big, the big pitch here for DeSalas. And you kind of wonder if he's kind of going away from pitching inside the righties right now, right? Yeah, he's let a few get away inside. Right. You might want to stay away from that. Ooh, and he does come inside. I, oh, I guess I did the jinx there by even breaking it up. <laughs> but, that you know, you can tell, I mean, you know, for us, we're sitting right behind home plate. I mean, Lundenberg was was uh, set up for like a low fastball outside on the knees, and he came in fast, you know, high fastball. One two pitch, curveball, strike three, with a big punchy from the umpire. So a big strike out there by the junior Gasales, as he's feeling the flow, ready to do the bull dance. As we see the catcher here come up, Nick Brandt. What's Brant been doing here? He had a base on balls in the first inning. He had a single in the third, came around to score. Also knocked in, a, I believe, a couple of runs with that one. Yes, yep. he did. And then flew out to Ryan Eckerly at short okay. back in the fourth. So one for one for two officially. Yep. yep, and I think he had two RBIs in that single, as we mentioned. So Macaroon, uh, who reached on a hit by pitch, is, is over at third, stole second. Fastball, nice piece of hitting by Brandt. Goes with the pitch right up the middle as Tosales challenged him. 
and Brandt gets his third RBI, second hit of the day. Tosales was really cruising that inning, and uh, just looked like that fastball got away from him. And just you know, I mean, nice yeah, piece le of hitting left by it up and over, over the plate. Correct. Perfect spot for the batter to get a good look at it, take a take a healthy cut. So with Macaroon now in the game, they're going to have the. Uh, Courtesy runner for the catcher Brandt is going to be Vinny Woodell. He's going to be at first. Ooh, took something off that there. Might have been like what they call a slurve. That's the old kind of combo of a slider curveball. Because it wasn't a changeup, but it looked like it had kind of the speed of a changeup. 0 oh, 1 count to Salas facing Charlie Novak, the first baseman. 6 3 is our score, top of the six. I don't know if we fully hit 60 degrees. Like you said, when the sun pops out, the wind cools down. It does feel like it's 60, at least on the back of our neck. But all in all, I mean, we're not sitting in 30. So we're happy to be here, and we're also very thankful for Egan TV and the wonderful crew for broadcasting this year to those that can't be in attendance. Do you know how many games in total this season are being yeah. able to broadcast? I believe Egan is set for four games at home and then one road game. And they typically we typically do a road game uh, at El Magnet, and that's usually against uh, either Burnsville or Apple Valley, one of the two. And uh, it's kind of a combo platter. I think then I think when we do those games, and I think it's run on Egan TV and on Burnsville TV. I could be wrong. Um, but I know that we've done that in the past, where we do at least one road game as well. And then we'll see as you know as the season goes on. Uh, Egan starts you know going deep in the playoffs. Well, then we try to pick up some of those playoff games. Um, look back to uh, 2021, the year that Egan made it to the section final and unfortunately lost both games to uh, Cottage Grove, Park Cottage Grove. We we covered I think one of the playoff games during that tournament, and then we covered both of those section final games. So they're, they're obviously flexible as long as it opens up for the schedule. Ball hit down the line is foul. It's a 2-2 count, two down. Tosales is on the mound. He's a junior. First varsity action here today. And I've been impressed. Other than kind of, you know, challenging no, uh, challenging Brandt up the middle. And that's a veteran hitter too. And uh, I mean, he just hit a clean base hit up the middle. But otherwise, uh, Tosales could have had two scoreless innings here pretty quickly. Curveball, strike three. So that's the Salas' second strikeout of the day, the second inning. But Eastview does attack. It gets one run on one hit, no errors, and one left on base. We will keep it here. Once again, like I said, I want to make sure we say thank you to all those at Egan TV. We have Josh, the producer and director in the truck, along with Kevin on replays, Savannah, or Savina, excuse me, on graphics. And then I want to thank our Thank our camera crew of Max and Sarah here out in the elements, but uh, not as cold as it normally is for that camera crew. And we're gonna see, looks like the Sutter's gonna come out here for the sixth inning. So I think as we were talking about it, Skip, with the uh, pitch count potentially looming, this probably is looking like his last inning, but we'll see how everything kind of goes. He could have a quick inning. Yeah, my records show again, he's he's 80, maybe a little bit over. Okay. So I'm, I'm you know, we're getting close to that, yeah. that magic number. And, and like I said, I it's been a while, you know, every year you have to, I, I just, those are some of the things that, you know, what I probably should do is just have, you know, study the uh, Minnesota State High School League rules or, you know, some of the uh, intricacies of the game uh, because that number could have maybe changed a little bit too. And, and 85, might be, I might be low on that number, but I feel like if, if the number was 85, we would see somebody warming up and we've yet to see anybody warm up unless, and this is the other thing you have to remember, unless it is a, uh, a position player that's coming in that their arm is already loose and they say, hey, I don't really need any bullpen work, right? So, the Sutter is gonna face, uh, let's see your Gage, yep. So it's gonna go Gage, Lockemeyer, Cunningham. That's gonna be the five, six, and seven hitters for Egan. Fill me in on what Gage has done here so far here for a skip. Gage had a base hit in the first inning, knocked in a run, line drive to left, and then in the third inning, grounded out to the pitcher. So he's one for two with an RBI. He has one of the two hits okay. that I have recorded here. So Egan needs to needs to put the ball in play and, and get some runners on base. They're gonna come back down three. And it, and it does look like Macaroon is now out in right field. 
I believe he did hit for Isaiah Jones. You can check in a second. First pitch is a ball. Second pitch is a ball. So he hit for Wohler, but I'm wondering if they did, if they moved, it looks like they moved Wohler out to left. No, Wohler was in left, right? Yeah, so it looks like he did come in for Jones. Well, we'll, we'll figure it out here in a second. They might have moved some guys around here. But I, unless I, let's see, what number is Jones? 21? Looks like a single digit out in right to me. And then we do see some uh, action in the bullpen. Looks like number 11, Xander Helvey is warming up. 3-0 count, Egan down 6-3. Hitting his Tate Gage. Fastball in there for a strike. I'm, I was wondering if they, if they shifted some guys around, but... Or no, maybe that is still Jones out and right. You know what, I bet you Macaroon just hit and they probably re-entered Wohler out to left. I bet you that's what it was. All right, Gage gets a walk. That's gonna be the third on the day for DeSutter. So we'll see, now can Egan get to DeSutter here towards the end of his outing? Whether he's actually tired or, and wearing down or not. But DeSutter obviously has cruised ever since the second inning. Gave up two in the first, one in the third, and has rolled ever since. Hasn't given up a hit, I believe, Skip. Yeah, he hasn't given up an inning since, a, since yeah. the first inning. The second oh, really? inning, they scored a run, but we scored a run without a hit. There you so. go. Yeah. So really, the only blemishes have been a walk here and there or a hit by pitch. Gage takes off, throw from the knees. Benny Benito Santiago style for those at home. By Brandt. And Gage gets his first stolen base of the season. Let me check that out. Give me a, an update. What did Gage do last year? I felt like Gage might have had a stolen base or two last year, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he had five five steals. And yeah. Number tied for first on this list of guys returning. It yeah, like. he was tied for fourth and runs, second in walks, I think, last year. But yeah, he uh, as a pinch runner or whatever. And like I said, I believe he was five for five. So I think, you know, with Gage and Anderson, obviously those are some burners. Danny Lockemeyer, the senior, first baseman, also going to be called upon to do some pitching this year. Strong lefty. Had the most innings last year on the mound. 45 strikeouts and 40 innings pitched last season. Lockemeyer, ooh, should have kept those, should have kept those uh, doggies in there for a beanball. 2-1 <laughs> count. Gage is trying to manufacture a run on his own here as he stole second after a walk. That was the third walk of the day by DeSutter. And like we said, we do see some action in the Eastview bullpen as Helvey is getting loose. Popped up. Down the line. This is going to be between Schmitz, and Schmitz is going to go out there and make the play over Jones. So, yes, we are correct that it looks like I'm going to have to scratch off Macaroon and put Isaiah Jones back in there because he came, he never left the game. Wohler was the one that got pinch hit for. All right, Matt Cunningham steps in. Second baseman, senior. I think his last at bat was a grounder to second. Hit sharply, just didn't kind of, just a tad behind it. So Gage on second, one down, six threes are count. Heater in there for a strike. He struck out looking to end the first inning okay. when the Wildcats had seven runners, or excuse me, seven batters yep. in the first inning. By far, they're their most productive inning yeah. today. Yeah, I know, and that's just the thing. It's uh, you you know, that's a, where you look back and go, man, you know, if we just could have had a few little bit better at bats in that first inning, and maybe caught him when his you know his stuff wasn't as sharp, right? Because as we said, DeSutter still hasn't given up a hit since the first inning, but he has given up three earned runs, three walks, six Ks. in uh, five innings plus work. Once his day's done, I'll, we'll get the full tally as to how many batters he faced. I stopped keeping track after the third, unfortunately. Big swing by Cuttingham. 0-2 count. Second baseman, Matt Cuttingham. Gage reached on a walk, stole second on the first pitch. Fastball, foul down the line. Nice job protecting the plate there. That one yep. looked like strike three, and he, he was a little late on it, but still got, got enough contact. Absolutely. Looks like we got a little action in the uh, 
Egan bullpen as well. Can't check out the numbers, which is fine. We'll, we'll find out, or they'll tell us over the PA. 0-2 count, time is called. On deck will be the third baseman, Theo King. So a big at bat here for Cunningham and a, and a big chance here for Egan as well if they can try to run to Sutter out of the game to face Helvey. Another nice piece of hitting on that curveball. Yeah, if he can find a way, you know, to get a run back, maybe get to Sutter out of the game, you know, it's hard to know what you're gonna get from a you know guy coming out of the bullpen for his first outing as well, right? And then yeah, a, a, a base hit with an RBI here brings the tying run to the plate. Exactly. So it, you know, then anything anything is possible at that yep. point. Yep, absolutely. 0-2 count, one out. Cunningham falled off the last two pitches. See what DeSutter comes with here. Curveball low and in. 1-2. Nice pitch on an 0-2 count. Yeah. Throwing yeah. that curve down, see if he can get him to chase well, it in the dirt. And that's, and that's what I was saying. I mean, he's just he's gotten so much sharper since about the end of the second as he gets his seventh strikeout of the game on a fastball outside that gets Cunningham to chase. But yeah, I mean, that's what you can tell, right? You can tell that obviously uh, he's got plenty of confidence and experience because, you know, on an 0 2 pitch, he's not afraid to come inside with a curveball because he knows how sharp it's going to be, right? You know, normally that's a pitch you go, well, I don't know if I want to throw that to a righty because that's the pitch that they can probably attack. So Theo King, this third baseman, comes in as we see Gage gets his second slow base of the season as he takes off. Nice play over there at third by Riedel as a block it, keep it in front, keep Gage from coming around to third. Wait to see what was called on the play. I don't know, I think it was a ball. Should have been a strike. I thought okay. I saw the umpire put his arm up, but still waiting for the scoreboard update. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. No, we're one more stolen base away from a run. Yeah, I mean, I mean maybe Gage <laughs> can manufacture <laughs> all on his own. Okay, so it was a strike. Alright, so 0-1 count to Sutter on the mound. Theo King at the plate. Just misses low. So I believe we are 1-1. King is junior. Gage at third. The center fielder. Fastball outside corner for a strike. So one, two count. Two down, six threes are score. Egan out getting out hit seven to four. And did most of their action, as we said, in the first inning, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because he hasn't given up a hit since, so. And I feel, and I feel like we might, I feel like there was an, a phantom hit that was added to the board for Egan. I felt like they were stuck on either two or three hits. But we'll figure that all out. Ball low. We did have a hit, Joe Anderson, in the fifth inning. Okay. Led off the inning, okay. so there, there's one that we're missing. Yeah, so that's, that's the, the one, one we're missing, okay. Otherwise, yeah. Otherwise, it was the most of the action was in the first. Exactly. Game. Yep. And there's the the disagreement of we, I think we have an error on right. one. May Correct. have been a scoreboard Correct. ruling of a hit. So there you go. Fastball inside corner. That's going to be strikeout number eight for the Sutter. So for Egan in the bottom of the six, they get no runs on, no hits, no errors, and one left on. We're going to roll into the top of the seventh. We'll be back in 60 seconds here as Eastview leads Egan 6-3 to three here at Egan Wildcat Park. How you holding up? Nothing wrong with getting help. If I promise to look into it, Will you drop it and help me build this fence? <laughs> now you need my help. If you or a veteran you know needs support, don't wait. Reach out. Find resources at va.gov reach. I don't know why you're so sad. You've got a roof over your head. You gotta stop with that depression stuff. That's a white people thing. You all right? It just feels like it's coming from everywhere. Do you want to talk about it? You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, okay? Watch 
Wash your hands for 20 seconds, just like Elmo. Okay, Baby Shark is in the background, so I, we're, we're playing a whole lot of, whole lot of. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm dropping my earlier A-plus music statement down to an A-minus. Yeah, well, I don't see too many people dancing either, but anyhow, it's 6-3, and we have a freshman making his varsity debut, and that is Brendan Madiman. So he's gonna get in, get in for some early uh, action here today. Six threes our score. Hoping to have a quick one, two, three inning, and then maybe we can see some magic and some fireworks in the bottom of the seventh. Egan does trail six to three, and it was the big third inning for Eastview that they uh, took over the lead at at uh, five to three, and then they tacked on one more with two outs in the sixth. Fastball, he's got a strong arm, is outside for a ball. The, lead, the leading off this inning is gonna be the third baseman, Charlie Riedel. But yeah, kinda as the game went on there, uh, Skip, I mean, Eastview attacked right away in the first inning, got one, and then you had to you know, tip your caps to Egan. I mean, uh, it wasn't maybe the best inning that they were hoping for from, uh, from you know, the, the sophomore, Will Mitchell, but the bats came alive and they found a way to scrap together two runs and uh, you know scored another, and then Mitchell had a great second inning. So things were looking good. They took a 3-1 uh, lead, pop up. It's gonna give room to uh, Lock and Meyer. It's gonna be down the line, it's gonna stay foul. And it was caught by Eddie. So I was blocked by the runner and the umpire. Looks like uh, the right fielder did his job. Nice job by Eddie Moore to come over and call off Lockmeyer. That was a long run for the first baseman. Yeah, I was beginning to get a little worried there. All of a sudden, Eddie kind of came out of nowhere. We had a yeah. nice, nice bucket catch there. So good good first out there. I was needed here for the freshman. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and it just shows you what the wind's doing, especially even above us, right? Because when that ball was hit, I was thinking it was going to be more down the line towards the fence. That thing almost came all the way back into fair territory. First pitch ripped down the line. It's going to give Anderson a chase, and that's going to make Kronberg on first pitch swinging a double, but that just shows you how big that out was by Eddie Moore in right, because he could have had an uh, RBI hit right there. Yeah, absolutely, right? yeah. Good defense leads to hopefully yep. a, a scoreless inning, but yeah, that one was ripped on the line, no yeah. doubt about that. Well, and the thing is, is that this is a freshman. I mean, you can't say there's a lot of scouting. I mean, you just have to go up there, see ball, hit ball, and, and obviously Kronberg, you know, is probably sitting there going, if he throws me a fastball first pitch, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump on it, right? And that's what he did. So. With that being said, Kronberg's on second with a double. That's gonna bring up the second baseman, Ben Schmitz, who made an amazing play up the middle uh, that saved a run for Eastview. Nice curveball in there for the freshman, Madiman. Madiman throwing strikes early on, which you gotta love. I mean, both him and Tassalis, you know, their first varsity experience, the moment hasn't been too big for him. So that, that definitely a positive that, that the coaches and uh, pitching coach Luke Degermont is gonna take from today's game. I mean, yeah, look ball, at that. Ball right? fires right yeah. out of there. It looks good. I mean, he's got, got some good gas on him. He's got a good arm slot. And what you really like to see is that uh, you know, he's, he's hitting low on the knees early on here. So 0-2, so now this will be the big pitch. We'll see which way he goes here, whether it's a fastball low and outside or off speed. He went a heater again. Probably a little bit more to the middle of the plate that they wanted. But in all in a sense, uh, Schmitz was unable to keep up, catch up to it. It's quite a difference between him and Tassalis. Tassalis right. was a little bit wild, right? He, right? he hit a couple of batters, threw one behind a batter, right. whereas so far it's been mostly strikes here. Well, and I think too, I mean, what's I think what works well with when you went with a combo of Tassalis to Maidaman is the arm slot difference, right? As you can tell, Maidaman is, is, is taller over the top, but it's coming with a more downward angle, right? Towards that outside corner, down towards the knees. Whereas Tassalis was throwing it hard, but he's more of like a three-quarter, so his arm slot, the ball's coming at a different angle, and then he's also probably using that to his advantage a little bit more on that curveball and slider, right? 0-2, oh, as Kronberg is on second. There's a the curveball up high, strikeout number one for Maidaman on his varsity career for the freshman. 
So two down as Isaiah Jones, the right fielder, steps in. Kronberg is at second with that one out double down the line. Hey, put down right away. Here goes two boys. Hey. Stay hot. Jones so far one for three today. He did have a two run single in the third inning. That okay. big four run third okay. that gave Eastview the lead. Sure, all right. So if Maidaman gets out of this inning, I mean, Egan bullpen, if you want to say, would have gone three innings and given up uh, two hits and only that one run. Fastball's in. Tosalis had uh, two strikeouts and two innings. He had that one one hit and uh, he did hit two batters and gave up that one two out single up the middle to the catcher Brandt. Kronberg at second, two down. Freshman Madaman on the mound, 2-0 count. Heater in there for a strike. Jones has put everything into play so far. I said he was one for three. A yeah. couple of ground outs to Eckerly at short and then that, that two run single was yep. a ground ball up the middle. Okay. Yeah, and it, by the looks of it, he's got he's got some wheels to him too. So I mean, uh, obviously the infield knows that they got to get it and get rid of it. Now there's fastball in there for a strike. So, Maidman was down 2-0, and come back with two heaters, two-two count, two down, six-three is our score here at Egan. Eastview out hitting the Wildcats eight to four. As we said, they had the big four-run third inning, and then they scored. Another tack on run in the six after Egan was leading three to one. Big hammer! Strike three to Charlie. As Maidaman comes in, does the job, gives up a double down the line, but then strikes out the next two batters for his first varsity experience. We're gonna keep the good vibes here going. We're gonna stay here for the bottom of the seventh as we get rolling in. And I think we're gonna have a pitching change as well. So far, Skip, give me a little recap of what, uh, what you've seen here. Uh, through six and a half innings of play. Well, really, you got to tip the hat to DeSutter, the starting pitcher yep. for the for the Eastview Lightning. I mean, rough first inning. Yep. Understandable. I mean, right. probably his, you know, they, they've played one game. This right. is not their first game right. of the season, but probably his first time on the pitching mound. Yep. So, you know, you're, you're going to come off a little rusty. We talked about it. We were hoping, you know, maybe Egan could have capitalized a little bit more. They yeah. couldn't. Obviously, he got into his groove. I mean, you know, maybe doing his best Brad Radke impersonation from yeah. years ago, right? right. Tough first. He did but give then, up a home run to the lead up. No, he didn't. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we could have done the common prediction of, uh, you know, at 447, Joe Anderson, home run. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or vice versa, right, if you're, say, Egan player. We're going to have a reliever, and maybe this is their uh, closer. It's hard to say. It did work out in, in Eastview's favor as the Sutter was able to go six. This is going to be Xander. Let's see. No, no, no. No, no, no. Okay, so they were warming up Helvey. This is actually going to be the third baseman as Charlie Riedel is coming in. So uh, now we have to figure out who is playing third. And we'll see that in a second. Okay, so Macaroon is over at third now. I don't know how they, yeah, I don't know how they moved all that around. That's fine. So, I, so, we, so we saw Helvey was the one that was warming up. And now it's the third baseman, Riedel, so very well that is their closer, is coming in. But with that all being said, let's just, we're gonna play some ball here. We're gonna have a pinch hitter, and I'm gonna have to actually pull out my phone to see who this is, and I think I know, but I'll tell you in one second here. There's a little uh, snap foo with the old lineup card, but uh, we won't blame anybody on it. <laughs> we're just all working on the first game of the season. This is gonna be Aiden, Canty, so Aiden Canty, C-A-T-E-Y, so not Cantley if you're thinking Masters today. Heater, high and in, Cantley, and I, I, you know what, I will say this to Canty, I will say this, he, he knew that he was probably gonna get a chance today because uh, when I went over to get the lineup card, he was taking some cuts, doing some T-work in the cage. Fastball, swung on, fouled away. So Egan needs base runners, and they also are trying to flip the lineup here too. They will get uh, back to Joe Anderson. So Canty's batting for Eddie Moore right now. You have that in your book too, right, Skip? Yes, sir. All right, good. So we're on par there. All right, another one fall back. A little bit behind, obviously uh, coming in cool. First at bat of the season. 
Might even be Canty's first at bat of his varsity career. And let's just say that uh, Riddell has a live arm coming over from third. I don't. I won't put a number on it, but I feel like he's almost getting up to yeah. high 80s. Outside corner for a strike. As Riddell gets his first strikeout of the game. That'll bring up the leadoff hitter, the left fielder, Joe Anderson. And as you said, Joe Anderson has found himself on base a few times today, right? Or at least once. He walked in yep. the first, came around to score, struck out swinging in the second, and then had a base hit, a line drive to right field. So okay. yeah. one for two officially with yeah. the run scored. All right. Yeah, one for two. Obviously a threat to steal, but you know they're not gonna be overly aggressive down three here, so they just need runners on the base. Outside corner in there for a strike. I mean, my eye gun would, would say that he's probably mid to high 80s. I mean, it, it, you can tell there's a big difference between, uh, I mean, he's throwing the hardest out of anybody here today. Yeah, absolutely. I feel I feel like there was a step up in the in the speed when, you know, when Madman came yep. on in, in the last inning, and now yeah. I'm seeing it again here. Yeah, and I feel like, there's a, like it's another layer of a step up, right? One, two count, yeah. fastball down the middle for a strike. Riedel gets a second strike up, both looking. So that's gonna bring up the shortstop, Ryan Eckerly. As you're gonna see if you can get a little uh, party after two. Magic here in the bottom of the seventh. E uh, almost said Edina, almost said the wrong color, wrong school. Egan down 6-3 here to the Crosstown rival Eastview as right, Riedel comes in with a heater on the outside corner for a strike. I mean, I think so far, if uh, Riedel's thrown eight pitches, I think that about all of them but one have been a strike. That right? is correct. I mean, you're looking at it, right? Yeah, you got one ball. One the ball, rest have yeah. either been and you that know, one ball, strikes or foul yeah, tips, right? The foul one ball, ball, he brushed back the uh, uh, brushed back Canty. So Riedel comes in and just goes one, two, three. Please, somebody give me a lawnmower as he snaps him down for three strikeouts. We'll give you a quick recap here before we leave. So DeSutter goes six innings, three three hits, three walks, has eight Ks, three runs. Excellent job of him, especially from the second inning on, as Skip said. Riedel comes in, does get the save. One inning pitched with three Ks. On the Egan side, Mitchell went four innings. He'll take the loss. To Solison made him an excellent job in their first varsity experience. Once again, thank you to all those, though, at Egan TV. ETV for today's broadcast. We'll let you know when the next one's coming up. If you are uh, coming to a game, Egan is playing tomorrow. I can't tell you who, but they have a home game at 4.30. I'll be here doing the PA announcing. But thank you, Skip. We'll be excited to have you back for more. Yeah, my pleasure, Casey. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a fun season. Absolutely. Final here today is 6-3. Eastview comes across town, gets the win with a big four-run third inning. For uh, Skip Newton, I'm Casey Lux, and all those at Egan TV, thank you, and have a wonderful night. And don't forget, go Timberwolves tonight.